we welcome you to bb and Field here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Winter has come early to the Piedmont Triad area of North Carolina. It's Rivalry Week presented by Samsung Mobile. Big game for both of these teams, Boston College and Wake Forest. When the day began, nine teams were still alive to play in an ACC title game. Big game between Maryland and Florida State tonight. This one's big. Wake Forest taking on Boston College. Clemson with a win. They're even up at four and four. And NC State with a win in the Coastal. NC State has knocked out North Carolina. And Virginia has lost to Clemson. So their title hopes no longer alive. And hi, everybody. Terry Gannon along with David Norrie in the convoluted landscape that is the ACC here in 2008. A couple of things you need to know about these two teams. Very simple. Boston College with a win today, a win next week against Maryland. They play for an ACC championship. Wake with a win today and a couple of Maryland losses. They'll go to the title game. You got all this down in the ACC, David. Could you run that again for me? Sure, let's Take go right now. You'd be the only guy who knows. <laughs> but Boston College, they lost three of their first five ACC games, yet here they are. How have they done it? Well, I think they've done it with defense. If you go back to last year, Boston College goes to the ACC championship game. Everybody was talking about Matt Ryan, the passing game, the offense for Boston College. I really think it was a defense a year ago. They, they were an underrated unit. It's been the same story this year. This has been one of the best defenses in the country coming up with turnovers. They've been terrific in the secondary, picking off passes, making big plays. And they've got a linebacker by the name of Mark Herzlick, who is an All-American candidate, a guy that can get out in space. He has tremendous anticipation in pass defense, has made some very key interceptions. He's come up with 10 turnovers for Boston College this season, Terry, having a big, big year for the Eagles. Yeah, three big interceptions last week against Florida State. So it's a defense that not only stops you, they make you turn the ball over. It may not be easy today, though, because in Riley Skinner, you've got one of the best in the ACC running the show. I think Riley Skinner is as valuable to his team as any player in the country right now. I mean, it's hard to think about a Wake Forest team without Riley Skinner. Last week, he didn't have one of his better games of the season, and yet he made all the plays on the final drive. Coming down the field to beat North Carolina State, made a beautiful play here on third down. Working back to the line of scrimmage, drops it right on Marshall Williams' hands. Marshall Williams has to come up with that play, but I think it speaks volumes about Riley Skinner, the leader he is for the Demon Deacons, and he's going to have to have another big game if they're going to win this football game. Over 6,000 yards in the air already for his career. He's only a junior, Skinner is. They're honoring the seniors today in Winston-Salem. The coaches are ready to go. We've got Jim Grove wired for sound when we come back. It's BC and Wake here in the ACC. Scientific tests show that when one drinks Dr. Pepper slowly, one can truly relish the 23 flavors. Would that we could savor all our relationships, much as the conductor savors his Corral Nocturna, slowly. Comments, caller? Only one, Fraser. You never savored me slowly. Well, Lilith, I guess I finally found the right icy doctor. Fraser, I don't... Slower is better. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Whoa, it has no keyboard. And then, did it just click? You've never clicked a screen before. Is that supposed to happen? And is it supposed to feel so right? It feels like a keyboard, just no keys. What kind of mad genius is behind this? Oh, right. America's largest 3G network introduces the world's first touchscreen Blackberry, only from Verizon Wireless. This is ESPN Rivalry Week, presented by Samsung Mobile. BBNT Field here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. They just had a flyover. They should tell us before they do that. We <laughs> caught me by surprise. Jeff Jagodzinski, Coach Jag, second season, had a great year, obviously, to start last year. Won 11 games, first BC team win 11 games since 1940 and this year following it up with a seven and three season three and three in the ACC Jim Grove one of the best in the league 52 wins at Wake Forest this year six and four and four and three in ACC play we've got him wired for sound let's listen in 
and young guys that you counted on not having any snaps. You know, when our center broke his ankle, we have to we have to move our left guard, who we recruited as a center, to center, and that puts a true freshman at left guard. Now instead of 15 snaps a game, he's getting 60 snaps a game. I'm all wired, so don't say anything embarrassing. Great job, big boy. I love you. I don't think they needed the grandpa part. Love you, big boy. Tony, I love you, man. Great job. <laughs> Hang on. Tony, congratulations. Winning his class in the history of Wake Forest football. And they're honoring the seniors today. They've got a home game next week against Vandy. But it's Thanksgiving, obviously, and the students will be gone. So they wanted to honor the seniors this week. What is at stake? We talked about it. Simple. BC with a win today and next week against Maryland. They win the Atlantic Division. Wake Forest with a win today. They still need Maryland to lose two games, including that one tonight against Florida State. Yeah, and the way Boston College is playing football right now, I, I think that you know, they may be the best team in the ACC right now here getting into mid and late November the way they played last week at Tallahassee I think that was a statement game for Boston College. Yep. BC won the toss they defer it's Ryan Quigley getting us underway here in Winston Salem CJ Washington Devon Brown back deep it's Washington who will bring it this way. And out across the 20 to the 22 and that's where Wake Forest will start and get things underway offensively. Riley Skidder, the junior from Jacksonville, Florida, one of those guys that Jim Grove got out of Jacksonville and they've got a pipeline going down to that area of Florida. And Riley Skinner has done a terrific job of taking care of the football first and foremost for Wake Forest this year. Back going into that game last week against North Carolina State, he had only been picked off in one game. Entire schedule for Wake Forest. Yeah, four interceptions against Navy, but one last week in that matchup in Raleigh, just down the road. Quick throw out. DJ Bolden, the leading receiver, close to the first down. Out to the 34. So Bolden, who has 64 catches on the air, first down. Our impact players presented by Best Buy. There he is, leading the ACC in catches per game, but also Alfonso Smith defensively. Guy who can turn things around quickly. Yeah, he's one of the best big play cornerbacks in college football. And then Sam Swank. Big question mark on whether Wake Forest will get their All American kicker back this afternoon. It has really influenced Jim Grobe's decision making. Big spots during football games. Yeah, he's been out with a quad injury the last six games. He was kicking before the game and told our cameraman down there he would go. Big throw. Chip Brinkman, the senior from Florida, with the catch and a gain of seven. Yeah, Terry, I think this is going to be a real key. This Boston College defensive front, very difficult to run the ball against them, especially when you look at the two big guys inside, number 90, B.J. Raji, and then Ron Brace there on the left, big number 60. I think Wake Forest is going to have to make some hay in obvious run situations by using Riley Skinner's arm. And when you say big, you mean big. They go 324 and 325. <laughs> Here comes Skinner and run down by Raji. Turn back inside to the 38. Robert Francois in on the tackle. Good linebackers, too, for BC. Herzlick, you talked about him, but Mike McLaughlin inside and Francois on the weak side. And Mike McLaughlin has been. A bit of an unsung hero. Herzlick, of course, getting all the attention, having such a big year at that strong side spot. But McLaughlin was all over the field last week down at Florida State. Golden and Brinkman, the wideouts. On third and six. From the 40, excuse me, the 37-yard line. Skinner steps up. Had time, not anymore. Dumped at the 30. Jim Ramello was the first guy to get there. Caleb Ramsey also in on the tackle and a loss of eight. It brings up fourth down. Yeah. DJ Raji pushing the pocket as well from his defensive tackle position. See Ramella a bit with a bit of a flyby there, and it looks like Raji was the first one to arrive on the scene. Another big play. He's one of the most explosive pass rushers from an interior position in the country. Rich Gannell back deep at his own 30, awaiting the punt. Shane Hopper moves come on the punt and handle the field goals. This one's going to be down at the 40, but there was contact, and there's the flag. And it was a late flag. Punt of just 30 yards by Papa. Yeah, Ganell didn't have a chance to get to it. 
Uh, that used to be a five yarder in college football, but a couple years back they changed the rule to interfere with the punt returner's ability to catch the football, have space to catch the football. That's a 15 yard penalty and creates a short field here early for Boston College. Yeah, they start at the 45 of Wake Forest. Chris Crane, the 50 year senior out of Pennsylvania, who has only thrown one interception the last three games. That has been a big part of the Eagles' ability to turn things around. Josh Hayden on first down. Big game, close to a first down. You've got Hayden, who's a freshman from Fort Washington, Maryland, and Montel Harris, the freshman from Jacksonville. They'll split time at that tailback spot. Our best by impact players, Harris, coming out party last week, 121 yards on the ground against the Seminoles. Uh, talking about taking a lot off Chris Crane's played as of late, making him a game manager. I think he made some nice plays, and they did put the game on his shoulders at times last week. And then we've already seen B.J. Raji's impact early in this game. Second and short. Hayden bouncing outside. He's got the first down. Crane looked a lot more than a, just a manager last week. I thought uh, he had some great throws. Well, I think what they're trying to do by calling him a game manager is to, to let him know that he doesn't have to fit throws into tight spots down the field, that he doesn't have to have the game on his shoulders. Uh, he's free to throw the ball away at times and shade the ball away from Defenders, he did a nice job of that last week. At 6'4, 239 pounds, taking over for Matt Ryan, obviously. It's a guy who may have a future on Sunday. Keeps it on the ground inside the 30 to the 28. He also had some big runs late in that win. He did. He, you know, the zone read, you wouldn't figure a guy with crane size. I mean, he's even bigger than Matt Ryan. He goes about six foot five, 230. Nine, maybe 240 pounds, and the zone read and the keeps off the zone read really salted the game away, Terry, last week on the final drive of the football game. Second and six, Brandon Robinson, Rich Gunnell spread wide. Purvis the tight end. Here comes Lars Anderson in motion. Play action. Green with a little bit of time. Got a man over the middle, wide open. It was Robinson, and he missed him. Like to get that one back. Alfonso Smith on the coverage, but he was beaten by a step. Yeah, that was an opportunity for six, and that should be an easy throw for a quarterback with the arm talent of a crane. It's just going to be a post route, and Robinson's going to beat his defender to the inside. The play action fake sets things up. This is an easy throw for Crane more times than not. A little excited early in the football game. Didn't have to put as much velocity on the football there as he did. So it's third and six. Wake showing blitz. Here they come. Going to run right by it. Hayden inside the 20 has a first down to the 15. How do you like that call? Well, I, I think it's been a bit of a surprise. You know, Hayden has been the starter as of late for Boston College. He's the quicker of the two young true freshman backs. Montel Harris really emerged last week in the big win. But Hayden, a yeah, nice call by by uh, Steve Logan, the offensive coordinator on the draw play, as you said, Terry, and a bit of a surprise to see them going with Hayden early in the football game. Yeah, by Harris, a big game last week, but uh, a first down picked up by Hayden. They're going to hand it off inside again and down to the 12. So BC keeping it on the ground with the freshman. You look at the notable freshman tandems, by Rogers, in the year that he's had. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, when you talk about Oregon State having to win their last two games to get into the Rose Bowl, Rodgers has been a huge surprise, bearing down on 1,500 yards. And Hayden gives a nice change up to Montel Harris's punishing style of attack at running back. Hayden, the quicker side to side guy that's going to make you miss. Steve Logan, the offensive coordinator, nice job calling the plays on this drive. It's Hayden into the center of the line, Kyle Wilbur. The Richard freshman from Florida on the stop. And this has been a wake defense too. You, you talk about what BC has been able to do defensively making you turn it over. So too for the Demon Deacons. You know, wake Forest's defense has been a strength. I think the defenses for both of these teams have been the strengths of these squads over the season. We get a look at 59 Aaron Curry there at linebacker. Forecasted as a top 10 pick right now in the upcoming NFL draft. And Wake Forest's offense 
for Jim Grove has put a lot of pressure on this defense. It's put this defense in a lot of tough situations throughout the season. They bring in Montel Harris, the tailback spot on third and three. Crane looking for room, not going to find any. Matt Robinson, the veteran in his sixth year, the grad student, had the kneecap, broken kneecap back in 05, and he's been around forever here on campus. They love him. So it'll bring up fourth down, and BC has had its problems in terms of the kicking game. Nowhere to go for Crane. Now Robinson coming off that devastating knee injury. Played so well as a sophomore at Wake Forest, and he's finally back. And what an inspiration to the rest of this team, the way he's played. Steve Apinovichis on for the try, 32 yards. And good. Hasn't hit one from 40 yards or more this season, but the drive stalled. Good defensive stop by the Demon Deeks, but three on the board for the Eagles here in a key ACC matchup in Winston-Salem. Seats eight passengers and offers an EPA estimated 24 miles per gallon highway. It's not a myth. It's everything you've ever wished for. And then some. You girls have fun. It's time to unleash your inner Santa. Head to Santa's other workshop, The Home Depot, the one place with everything you need to make your home festive, inside and out, all at guaranteed low prices, now even lower. Bring the holidays home for less at The Home Depot. Me? I'm fast. That's why I use the BlackBerry Bold with AT&T 3G speed. I can surf the internet fast, download attachments fast, and send them to my friends fast. Excuse me for a sec. It's good to be fast. Only AT&T has the new BlackBerry Bold. The fastest BlackBerry ever. Only on the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T. Hey, Vincent! Go State! Hey, Ham. Why did that guy call you Vincent? Because that's my real name, Bergwood. It is? How do you know that? He's my Allstate agent. Oh, he insures your car. And my boat. You got a boat? Ah, my wife is a big time skier. <laughs> You married? All state agents know who you really are and what you really need. Call one today for a free Good Hands coverage checkup. Are you in Good Hands? Where'd you meet your wife? Pilates. Ah, uh, she's European. In one day, you've never seen an American Music Awards lineup sweeter than this. And for the first time, The Fray performs its new single. Jimmy Kimmel hosts the 2008 American Music Awards live tomorrow at 7, 6 central on ABC. This game is available in high definition on ESPN HD. Ronaldo Hall here on the campus of Wake Forest. Gorgeous campus. We were strolling the grounds yesterday. I was. I was. I a little look at the quad area there up on campus. This is one of the prettier campuses we get to visit each year. Always a pleasure to come down into the ACC and have a home stay with the Deeks. Bit of a late arriving crowd, quite frankly, because it is cold. We were in Madison, <laughs> Wisconsin, and Minnesota last week. 34 degrees snowing. It's colder here. There was some wind yesterday, and temperatures got down to the teens overnight. There was more than some wind. Yeah. Devon Brown's going to bring this one back. Not much going to cross the 20, and that's it. So another try for this Demon Deacon offense. It's been a bit of a struggle offensively through the year. Good start. We were here for the Ole Miss game. They started four and one, but just two and three since. Defensively, though, they've done a nice job. 29 takeaways, tied for second in the nation. BC's right there with them, so they are still in the running for Tampa. Yeah, defense has kept Jim Grove's team in the race for an ACC title game slot. And I think they found that they put a little bit too much on Riley Skinner in terms of attempts. 
early in the season. Brandon Pendergrass with the carry out across the 30 yard line. So Pendergrass and Josh Adams will split time. Adams, the sophomore from Cary, has been out with an ankle injury, but did play last week against NC State. We expect to see him today. Well, and if you look at both of these teams, really the story has been offensive line play. We've talked a lot about the defenses, but such stability for Boston College. For Wake Forest, so many lineups, a lot of injury problems. They have not been able to consistently get a run game going. That's pretty encouraging there, looking at second and two, getting eight yards from Pendergrass on a carry. Yeah, it might not be easy to run the football consistently today against this defensive front for BC. Belton was in motion, they handed to Pendergrass, and he's up to the 35, has a first down. Yeah, tough to move Ron Brace, BJ Raji out of the way. They did that time. Well, you have to change your game plan as an offense to account for Brace and Raji. And Wake Forest's offensive line has been up to the task early in this game. Pendergrast has shown me a lot of busyness in his running style. Quick feet. He's a very intense running back and he presses the hole very aggressively. Never stops moving, right? Never. Got the feet going all the time. First and ten. Skinner out of the shotguns. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. Incomplete. Rich Belton, the intended receiver. He heard footsteps. That's unusual for Belton. Belton usually a reliable pass catcher, and these are the plays you have to come up with when you're going to win on the road. An ACC championship potentially on the line. Now, Riley Skinner is a very accurate quarterback. He has not had a group around him that's been very dynamic catching the football this year. Don't have that breakaway speed at the wideout spot. Inside get Pendergrass spinning his way back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe just shy of that and a flag in the backfield. Mike McLaughlin on the tackle. So the penalty will back up the Deeks. Holding the 64 offense, 10 yard previous spot, still second down. That yeah, was Jeff Griffin, the right tackle, and it looked like he was working against Raji. B.J. Raji at 6'1", 323 pounds, is one of the quicker big men in college football. So athletic. And Terry, there's a real premium on Sundays for players that are space eaters and that can take up a couple blockers on an offensive line. But a brother plays hoops for the Eagles. They've got a big game against St. Louis this afternoon and another one in the NIT at the Garden Wednesday coming up with Purdue. Undefeated so far, D.C. This one's tipped, but caught. Not much of a game though. DJ Bolden, quick reaction to catch that. But Francois, right there, as soon as he caught it. Yeah, that ball was deflected, and that was a nice job by Bolden to be patient and wait for the deflection. This becomes a potential turnover off the deflection. That was Herzlick again. Herzlick so good coming off the edge from the outside linebacker position. Made a big play last week to force the interception to Bowman. Bowman took it back for six the other way. So you've got third and a mile. Third and 18 coming up for Skinner and the Deeks. And they need to talk things over. They looked at the sideline for a play, took forever to get it in, and then Skinner had a burn one. So with 5.42 left in the first, I'll be back in a moment. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. My name's Steven Suttles. I work at uh, Store 182 in Colleen. I really like working there, on a military base specifically. You know, having a loved one away during the holidays, it really stinks. We got wives coming in. I just need that guitar game. Can you guys just get me the one with the guitar? The difference on being a military base is people aren't just buying gifts for just their husband or their wife. They're buying gifts for their husband or their wife that they haven't seen in a year. They're buying gifts for their husband and their wife that this is the only time they get to spend with them. This is their shot right here. This is going to be the best Christmas ever. What is he doing? Said something about not driving through Texas without getting a shot of a bull. Ah! Guys? Ooh. Maybe we should help him. First one to get an empty chip? Taco Bell's new fully loaded nachos. Loaded with toppings so there are no empty chips. Not it. Not it. He seems angry! Not it. Not it. Not it. Oh, not it. What is wrong with you? Taco Bell's new fully loaded nachos. <laughs> not it. All trucks give you horsepower. All trucks give you torque. 
They all give you tow packages and beefy V8s. All trucks give you power. No one does it with less gas. No other full-size pickup has better fuel economy. Chevy Silverado, America's best truck. And now J.D. Power & Associates' highest ranked large pickup in initial quality. Football on ABC. Brought to you by Best Buy. You happier. Chevy, an American revolution. And Samsung Mobile, proud sponsor of ESPN Rivalry Week. Good look at the Z. Smith Reynolds Library here on campus. Still looking for that library at UCLA? Have yeah, you found had, that yet? I, I had heard that, that uh, it's pretty good. there was not a lot of that going on in the early 80s in the North Carolina State basketball Stop. program. Right now, third and eight. Let's talk football. Third and 18. Skinner <laughs> from the gun goes quickly incomplete through the hands of Bridgman. So that's two drops already. And Skinner shakes his head as he walks to the sideline. And you talk about an uncharacteristic drop from Brinkman. And Brinkman is not a guy that's going to wow you with his speed. He's been a possession receiver, key part of this team going back to the ACC championship. Very rarely will you see Brinkman drop a ball and again Skinner let down by his receivers outside. Gannell back deep with the lack of explosiveness and speed making things that you can't afford if you're a wake offense to have that happen. No you can't. Pop him on for the punt. No snap. Gannell for the third catch at the 44 yard line. So. Good field position again for BC. They've got three on the board. Just a 31-yard punt. Come back to Winston-Salem for this ACC matchup in a moment. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. This mentoring success story is presented by City. Bobby Bowden, in his 33rd season with the Florida State Seminoles, is currently neck and neck with Penn State's Joe Paterno for winning as active coach in the FBS. Since his arrival in 1976, Florida State has seen two Heisman Trophy winners in Charlie Ward and Chris Weinke. Under Bowden's guidance, Florida State has had 31 straight winning seasons, 26 consecutive bowl games, and two national titles. Seat movers, that's what you'd call us. We'd buy seats up in the nosebleeds and then move down. We'd look for no-shows. Who sometimes did show. Soda spillers. That is going to leave a stain. Go, 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 and then go. we'd swoop right in for the perfect seats. Hello. And goodbye. Want great seats? Your city card could get them. And now, every time you use a participating city card, you're in it for a chance to go on a three-city tour with Nickelback. Want the story of a lifetime? Your city card can help you write it. The Cadillac Red Tag Event. Right now, you'll find unprecedented values on our best-selling luxury models. From the award-winning Cadillac CTS to the legendary Escalade, now's the time to move up to Cadillac. During the first-ever Cadillac Red Tag Event, the price on the tag is the price you pay, providing incredible values like this. See your Cadillac dealer. Black Hot Half Cup of Coffee, please. Excuse me? Can I get a black coffee? Black coffee! I know, there we go. Where to go? Feed you on legs, please. What? We gotta feed you on legs, please. English. Got it. How does that make you feel? What does it make you feel? What? That's disturbing, Ozzy. Make yourself heard with the full corded keyboard Samsung Propel. Saturday Night Football on ABC, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, tonight at 8 Eastern. I'm Jeff Tabiri. You're listening to 88.5 WFTD from the campus of Wake Forest University. We hope our listeners are enjoying today's BC Wake Forest football game. We'd also like to welcome fellow commentators Terry Gannon and David Norrie to our campus. Back to you, Terry and David. All right, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you very much. WFDD, longest running public radio station in North Carolina. Man had the voice, didn't he? Yeah, I wonder if he can do play by play. Hope not. <laughs> First and 10, BC taking over at their own 44 yard line. Montel Harrison at tailback. Wake showing blitz. 
Trying to stop the run right now. Harris, tough running ahead for a couple. That's it for the freshman from Jacksonville. They had to replace Matt Ryan. That, that's the big story when BC started the season. It was a struggle for a while. Well, it was. And, you know, coming off such a big season for Ryan, and you got a guy that's been around as long as Crane has. I think they figured that he could do some of the things that Matt Ryan could do early in the season. They've had to change their game plan a bit, but got to give Coach Jacks a lot of credit having his team. All the players they lost, especially Ryan, number one pick in the draft, and they're right in the thick of it for the ACC title. Yeah, very important win last week, too. Ryan Purvis, the tight end, into the territory, close to a first down. Purvis, the senior, who was the third leading receiver, doesn't get as many looks this year. He's an all ACC performer last year, but without Ryan, the opportunity to haul in passes haven't been there, hasn't been there throughout the season for him. That's true, and he's a very reliable pass catcher. Chris Crane, when he's good and he's on, uh, he is as, as a tough a player and, and as impressive a player as you'll see a big drop back passer in college football. The problem is he's been a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde. He's made some bad throwing decisions, some picks, puts the ball on the ground from time to time. Montel is going to carry it for the first down. They were just shy, so they pick up a third down as we send it back to the studio to check in with Matt Weiner. Thank you, Terry. Our nominee for the Pontiac Game Changing Performance comes from Ohio State and Chris Beanie Wells, who, for all intents and purposes, broke the game open in the first quarter with this 59 yard touchdown run. The Buckeyes never looked back in their fifth straight win over Michigan. To cast your vote, just go to ESPN.com. Search the word Pontiac starting at 9 tomorrow morning. Yeah, it is rivalry week, isn't it? Ohio State and Michigan. A little different story, though, you know, today than we are used to. Big games around the country, though. Obviously, Texas Tech and Oklahoma. Crane's going to keep it inside the 40 to the 39. NCAA news and notes. Craig Robinson used to be an assistant in this neck of the woods at uh, NC State. Now Texas fired at Syracuse. Well, Muschamp, another Texas assistant. How about this? Mac Brown's be, he's going to be around for a while, but they've named Muschamp as the next head coach. Yeah, that was a real interesting piece of news when it came across the wire. Earlier this week, Will Muschamp, 37 years old, and uh, I think we're going to see Mac Brown for quite a few more years. Right. I think Will Muschamp is going to be well into his 40s before he takes over. Yeah, tight of coordinators leaving Austin. Crane's going to throw it to Harris for the screen, looks for a block, and then pushed ahead to the 32. So another positive gain, and they're mixing it up on the ground and throwing it. Yeah, this was a nice play by Crane. There's an arc to the screen pass at the quarterback position. You got to sell pass, then you got to slip the ball off, put a little handle on it for your back. And the backs don't catch the ball as well as the wide receivers, so you try to give them a little spin and a little handle on that football, and Harris a nice feel for moving the chains. You know, Harris, too, the knock on him early was that he didn't have the lower body strength, the leg strength, but you watch him throughout the season. You watch him last week. He got a lot done after being hit. Mm. Montel looking for a hole this time. To the 28. Don't forget tomorrow on ABC. Never seen an American Music Awards lineup bigger than this, Mr. Nori. Don't miss performances by Beyonce, Kanye West, Coldplay, Alicia Keys, many more. The winners all decided by you. Jimmy Kimmel hosts the 2008 American Music Awards at 7, 6 Central on ABC tomorrow. We'll be tuned in. We've been big on music this year. I know it. You've been finding a lot of music uh, history and nuggets all along the road. Got another one today? We got one coming up. We got a special, special edition today. Mm. Jumping, yes. jumping yes. outside the world of rock and roll. Are you allowed to do that? Yes, we are. Wayne ball is loose. Wake Forest has it. So the Wake defense will turn you over. Aaron Curry, the all everything outside linebacker. Well, this is a key for Wake Forest. They're going to have to get Crane specifically to turn the ball over. And Chris Crane put the ball on the grass three times last week at Tallahassee. Got one back late. Was almost disastrous. Fumble they almost lost with Crane late in the football game. He has had a lot of trouble handling the football, securing the football on keeps on the zone read. Looked like Alfonso Smith was the man who jarred it loose. Had some help, but it's first and ten. Demon Deacons. Deeks love to use their veteran cornerback on blitzes, and he's uh, 
bigger hitter than you might expect at five foot nine. Josh Adams, the sophomore from Cary, into the game. They're going to come on the reverse. Here comes Bolden. Looks for room. Well covered. Well defended by the BC defense. Dominique Scafe was the first guy in. And you look at Ramsey there too. They shut it down. A loss of five. Yeah, the Eagles very tough to catch this defense on specialty plays. Reverses. Double reverses and arounds because they're so disciplined. They stay at home. Florida State tried to utilize some trick plays last week with their skill, position, speed, and they were shut down. But what do you do? You can't run straight at them either because of the big tackles. Skinner under pressure and more. Down he goes. Mike McLaughlin with the sack. His third sack of the year. Mike McLaughlin we talked about how he's been underrated number 34 slipping the block there against Adams Adams lost his footing and Frank Spaziani the defensive coordinator says McLaughlin is a glass eater yeah classic tough guy <laughs> in the Boston College mold and what a compliment to Herzlick at that inside linebacker position Frank's bundled up like it's Boston feels like Boston here third and 23. Over the middle, Bolden with the catch, short of the first down at the 35. Nice job holding onto it, but DJ's going to be a couple of yards short. Wes Davis on the coverage and the hit. Yeah, this is a pretty throw, and Skinner, not known for having a big arm, shows us some arm strength on that throw, but Wes Davis, number 45, a very good job of positioning himself short of the chains and making sure that. Wake Forest does not pick up the first down. So what does a hit like that feel like on a day like today? Well, you'd have to you'd have to ask the players down on field level. As a quarterback, I had more than one wide receiver come back to me and say, uh, you know, thanks, Mr. Nori, for leading <laughs> me into a hard spot there. First Fourth yard. down, pop them on the punt, and BC burns a timeout. You do feel the hits a little bit more as the temperature creeps down into the 30s I can assure you and near the conclusion of today's game we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team Chevrolet making a one thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund and if Wake Forest is able to win this game at home Riley Skinner is likely to be one of those players of the game he means that much to his team and they cannot get into second and long third and long situations and you know, Terry when you say what 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 does this offense have to do they they they're going to have trouble running the ball at Boston College I think that they're going to have to be very effective on first and second down in the run situations utilizing play action and throwing the football how about the Batman look from Hersley yeah I mean, that's supposed to be eye black not face black <laughs> remember the wake had third and 18 on the previous series this time third and 23 they picked up 19 but you can't put yourself in that position Hoffman, this is a good one. Gannell under pressure for the fair catch back at his own 23. So this time, after a couple of punts of 30 and 31 yards, Poppin gets off a good one. The Cadillac Red Tag event. Right now, you'll find unprecedented values on our best-selling luxury models. From the award-winning Cadillac CTS to the legendary Escalade, Now's the time to move up to Cadillac. During the first ever Cadillac Red Tag event, the price on the tag is the price you pay, providing incredible values like this. See your Cadillac dealer. My mother used to say, always keep your heart open. It's the only way to give and receive love. That's the inspiration behind my open hearts collection at Kay Jewelers. I worked with Kay because as the number one jewelry store in America, they've brought more hearts together than, well, just about anyone. My wish is that my open heart design becomes a universal symbol of hope and love. Because if your heart is open, love will always find its way in. Monday, the two-night season finale event begins. The final three face off, and there will be one champion. Everybody better get out of the way. That's my title. ABC's Dancing with the Stars live two-night finale event begins Monday, 8, 7 central on ABC. Tuesday, January 6th. Nobody died! The doctors of Scrubs have found a better place to operate. Sorry, it's perfectly natural. 
that was you. Scrubs, all new episodes premiering Tuesday, January 6th on ABC. Three of man's proudest accomplishments, the wheel, fire, and the tailgate. Wait a minute. Mm-mm, something ain't right. Let's see what's going on. What are you grilling? Ostrich burger. Ostrich? Are you going to wash it down with Miller Highlight? Most certainly. You guys are five yards short of common sense. Can I borrow this beef? Yeah, Take sure. it over. Take it. Pay attention. Now watch your hair. Smell how good that is. Yeah. Your beef and high life and you're in. You with me? <laughs> now you're living the high life. Thank, Thank you. you. Ostrich. That's not a burger. That's a bird. Deal or no deal. Five days a week on ABC 45. All right, four quarters, guys. Fast and physical for four quarters today. Be good teammates today. There's going to be some adversity. I don't know what it is, but when it happens, pick each other up. Get, don't get too high. We're going to have some good things happen today. Keep working, keep working. Stay after them. Fast and physical. Third down today, guys. Offense, third down. Let's convert them. Defense, let's get off the field. Take care of the football on offense. Look for turnovers, guys, on defense. Men today, if you're on a special team, great commitment to each other. Great special teams today. Let's go win this football game. Jim Grubb trying to win not only a matchup here, but eventually an ACC title. Got me fired up. We open up the second quarter on the ground. BC going to run ahead. There's a flag on the play on the far side. Remember, BC controlling its own destiny. Two wins, and they are the Atlantic Division champs. Jim Grubb with a win today. A couple of Maryland losses will play in Tampa. Offside. Defense number 59, five yards pretty good spot, still first down. And don't forget, if Wake wins, they would knock out B.C. and Florida State, David. Yeah, and, and you listen to Jim Grobe in the pregame speech, and you get a real good feel for why he is such an exceptional coach. And it, it's not a fire and brimstone delivery. He doesn't get his troops too high. He doesn't get them too low. He lets them know that there's going to be some adversity. and. You know, the turnaround in this Wake Forest program, one of the most dramatic we've ever seen in the history of college football. It's authentic. It's sincere. It really you, is. You buy it. Crane back to pass. Got a man open. Robinson holds it in. Far sideline. Away from one. Finally knocked out. It's near midfield. Alfonso Smith, the first guy there on the coverage, but a gain of 21. And Crane right on the money. Yeah, Crane with one of his better throws. We've seen here in the last couple of weeks there on the post corner route for Boston College and the City X Factor offensive lines win championships. And I think Boston College is one of the better offensive lines in college football. It could mean an ACC championship still for the Eagles. And then Wake Forest, you have to turn Crane over. I think if you're going to win this football game, you've got to make the quarterback for Boston College make mistakes. Wake Forest has already been successful early. They cuffed up the, the football on the last drive. Hayden back in. Gain of maybe two as we send it to Times Square Studio and Matt Weiner. All right, Terry, here's a Verizon Wireless update from Happy Valley, where the folks would be even happier if Penn State could play its way to Pasadena with a win over Michigan State. Daryl Clark buying some time, finding Graham Zug there in the corner of the end zone. And Penn State has an early 7-0 lead, trying to win the Big Ten and get their 800th score victory. All right, it's cold here. That just made me feel really cold <laughs> seeing a clip from that game. You think there are a couple of Buckeyes that are tuned in after their win against Michigan? Big rooting for Michigan State. Crane's going to keep it as a first down and more all the way down to the 33. That was a quick burst outside and back up field. Well, Chris Crane, we talked about the success that he had on the keeps on the zone read last week. The fake, he's reading the defensive end. And a nice job by Crane, the recognition, defensive end coming inside, running with the running back, the tailback on the fake. Just pulls it out and picks up yardage. Look at the difference in their seven wins and three losses, the 16 rushing touchdowns and only one in the three losses. And we talked to Steve Logan and to Jeff Jagosinski. They thought in sprint, well, and that shoulder, that's what he's ooh, holding. I mean, he went to the ground in a hurry there. Watch the end of the play. See if he can pick it up. Well, it's so valuable to have a quarterback that can run the football, and there it is. I mean, you land on the shoulder, and that's his throwing shoulder. Dominique Davis has only played in two games. Better get ready. 
At a time when others don't, Nissan delivers. 0% financing on many of Nissan's most popular models. Nissan delivers. Attractive lease options on our full line of vehicles. Nissan delivers. A Nissan Altima or Rogue for only $199 a month. Or a brand new Versa for under $10,000. When you need it most, Nissan delivers. I got $583 from cashforgold.com. All I did was look through my drawer full of jewelry that I never wear. Turn your unwanted or broken jewelry, gold, silver, platinum, rings, chains, and bracelets into cold hard cash from cashforgold.com. I had no idea my gold jewelry was worth so much money. With gold, silver, and platinum at their highest value in decades, cashforgold.com is able to give you top dollar for your unwanted jewelry. And because we own our refinery, we can cut out the middleman which means more cash in your pocket. I sent in my diamond wedding band for my first marriage and got money the very next day. Just call the number below and ask for your free, prepaid, insured refiner's return pack. Fill the envelope with your unwanted or broken gold, silver, and platinum jewelry and mail it to our processing center. A safe, reliable transaction with satisfaction guaranteed. Call 1-800-652-9014. Call now. Things are gonna get easier Ooh, child, things will get brighter Someday, yeah. Wherever you are, whatever it takes Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there The premiere event, Wednesday, January 21st on ABC. Chris Crane with that injured shoulder. And they were looking at him on the sideline. Looks like he may be headed toward, toward the locker room right now. That did not look good the way that he fell to the turf as he walked off the field. So it's Dominique Davis who's only played in two games and thrown 12 passes. But they keep it on the ground, and Hayden scrambles ahead after being hit initially. The crane still headed to that locker room. But he, he was walking off the field after this hit. Now, Antonio Wilson riding the back, but that's Aaron Curry landing with his full weight on the shoulder of Crane. And crane just didn't make it to the sideline. You talk about a huge turn of events for Boston College sitting in the driver's seat controlling their own destiny to get to the title game and yeah, Davis the redshirt freshman from Lakeland Florida they'll keep it on the ground near a first down for Hayden again and that may be what you're going to see from the Eagles for a little while here till they get Davis warmed up Davis is a very much an unknown quantity just a redshirt freshman from Lakeland Florida his brother Desmond Clark is a tight end for the Chicago Bears. 71 yards on the ground for BC. The Eagles figure to get a bit more run heavy with the play calling from Steve Logan. You would imagine. It's third and one. Out of the shotgun now is David. Inside give, and they'll have the first down. Hayden again powering the lead. So an offensive line is some. Uh, some pressure on their shoulders the rest of the way now. Well, you're absolutely right. The offensive line is going to have to pick up the flag as they've done all year long. Now, Steve Logan and Jeff Jagosinski talked to us earlier this week and said in spring practice earlier this year they had glimpses and they felt like this offensive line was even better than Matt Ryan's offensive line a year ago. Yeah, as Steve said it's the best one he's been around. Logan a long time ECU head coach. Over in Greenville in this state, Aiden fighting his way down to the 15. And it, why go to the pass right now? They're moving the football and keep moving the chains. Gain of seven. And a reminder tonight, it is rivalry week. Yeah, Texas Tech, Oklahoma. If these two teams, I heard a stat on the radio today, the ESPN radio, they just do their normal thing tonight, you'd have 99 points and over 1,000 yards. How about that? That should be a great one. Well, you look at the numbers, Sam Bradford, Graham. 
Carroll. I think the you know, defense is going to be the difference tonight. Oklahoma playing at home and a better defense for the Sooners. Davis is going to keep it. Got a block initially and down to the 12. That's where he needed to get. Chip Vaughn on the stop. The excellent free safety. He's had a great career here, the senior from Fairfax, Virginia. The two great tacklers at safety for Wake Forest. Chip Vaughn, number nine, playing alongside Kevin Patterson, a strong safety who many think is the best tackler overall on the team. Vaughn, number nine, is a guy that will come up and smack you. He is one of the more physical safeties that we see up and down the ACC. Now Vaughn, his dad was a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. Mom and dad went to North Carolina. And the Eels were beaten today by NC State, knocked out of the race. First and ten, Davis again is going to keep it and lose yards. Kyle Wilbur, the defensive end, and he had help from Kevin Patterson and more. Well, you see how much success Crane has had as of late, running the zone read, keeping the football, but it becomes a different deal with Dominique Davis in the game. Now all of a sudden, Wake Forest can play the zone read. They can get more defenders up on the line of scrimmage. They're not as threatened with the pass game and the arm talent of a Chris Crane. And I think now for Wake Forest on defense, your game plan becomes you know, put it on Dominique Davis' shoulders. Make him throw the football to beat you. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Davis to throw. There's all the time in the world. Throws behind the intended receiver. It was Anderson. And knocked out of his hands by Vaughn. And if he leads him just a little bit, you have a completion. And Dominique Davis, you see, he can buy time. He has some mobility. Ball thrown slightly behind Lars Anderson. And it looked like he had Purvis open about eight yards deeper behind Anderson. Near the first down chains inside the five, and he elected to come underneath. Crowd standing here in BB and T field. DC very good so far on third down. Davis steps up, looks to run, caught behind the line of scrimmage. Boo Robinson as they you hear the boos coming down. The nose guard from Monroe, Louisiana. Well, Another big play by this defense, too, David. Yeah, you know that Boo Robinson has been reading all the accolades and press for the two defensive tackles at Boston College. All week long, Boo Robinson has had to hear about it, and that is an impressive play, tracking Davis down from behind. Abinovich is on. He hit a 32-yarder earlier in the game. This from 30 yards. And good. You get him 30 to 35 yards, he's been successful. In fact, he hit a couple against Florida State last week and is now two for two this week. But what will happen with Chris Crane in the locker room? They're checking him out. We'll find out in a moment. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. I don't miss work this Christmas. Yeah, how will you pay for things like food, electricity, Ooh, dental bills? Good Zooks! You need a backup plan. Oh, oh, oh. That's why we have Aflac. So I'll have cash to help pay bills. Ah. Right, but what if you're still not better by Christmas? Hmm. Aflac! Aflac, ask about it at work. Rudolph's better. But what? now Blitz is sick. Inside that truck is something familiar, batteries. And if you think all batteries are the same, consider this. These batteries are going to the Mattel Children's Hospital, UCLA. Because here, they use the most technologically advanced equipment for the healing. And the play. And to power all those Mattel toys, the people at Duracell packed up a truckload of batteries. Because nothing's better than powering a smile. Duracell. Trusted everywhere. At a time when others don't, Nissan delivers. 0% financing on many of Nissan's most popular models. Nissan delivers. Attractive lease options on our full line of vehicles. Nissan delivers. 
a Nissan Altima or Rogue for only $199 a month, or a brand new Versa for under $10,000. When you need it most, Nissan delivers. ESPN College Football on ABC, brought to you by Nissan. When you need it most, Nissan delivers. Aflac, ask about it at work. And College Game Day is built by the Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. From Fairfax Station, Virginia. 16 seniors being honored this week, even though they do have a home game next week against Vandy, but because it's Thanksgiving, they're doing it this week. 30 wins for this class, the winningest class in the history of Wake Forest football. A lot of lifelong friends have been made on this team. We have that kind of success, and we talked about the turnaround of this program under Jim Grove. By far, light years differential. Yeah, the, best, the best senior class in the history of this program. Remember, we talked to the players, and they said that group was called the Fresh Deeks. They called themselves the Fresh Deeks. That's right. And at first, when Jim Grove said, you know what? You're going to redshirt. I don't play through freshmen. There were a number of those who thought about transferring, and they decided to stay and make something special happen. Here in the the, the ACC championship, and we do have the last two Atlantic Division champs playing, but one in seven back in 04. Yeah, and you look at the 2000. Free kick out of bounds, kicking team, ball be placed at the 40 yard line, first down. And you look at that 2004 year, four and seven. Of course, that was the year that those freshmen had to sit out and they were watching, and the two, two four and seven years back to back. And then the turnaround. But that's what they were thinking. I, I'm sitting here not playing for one in 17. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, it has to run through your mind. Here's the pitch. It's Adams on the carry. Not much there, though. Gain of maybe one. That speed on the outside again. And Herzlick was involved. Alfonso Smith with 19 career interceptions. Dre Bly has 20. He would tie him if he got one today and Aaron Curry slated right now as a top 10 pick in the first round NFL draft of course Sam Swank one of the top dual specialists in all of college football just 28 total yards for Wake Forest this one picked off they're going to bring this to the house Hosley for a touchdown He had it, and he was off to the races before I think most of the offense for Wake Forest knew what was going on. Now you look, Jeff. You look at Jeff Jagosinski just smiling to himself, and you know you wonder how does Herzlick make that play? He was on top of Skinner. How does he catch the ball that cleanly? It looked like he just took it off his hand. 34 yards to the end zone. What a play! And they are the number one defense in the nation in picking off passes. Papanava just on for the extra point. It's 13-0 BC. So we go to break. Watch this. Made it look easy. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. Have fun. It's time to unleash your inner Santa. Head to Santa's other workshop, the Home Depot, the one place with everything you need to make your home festive, inside and out, all at guaranteed low prices, now even lower. Bring the holidays home for less at the Home Depot. At a time when others don't, Nissan delivers. 0% financing on many of Nissan's most popular models. Nissan delivers. Attractive lease options on our full line of vehicles. Nissan delivers. A Nissan Altima or Rogue for only $199 a month. Or a brand new Versa for under $10,000. When you need it most, Nissan delivers.
Make your skin feel irresistible. Skin Contact. New hydrating shower gels from Axe. Pacific Life has been the power behind successful individuals for more than 140 years. Pacific Life's strength includes assets exceeding $100 billion. Ask your financial professional about how Pacific Life can help you reach your retirement goals. Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. The Holiday Classic at Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, Tuesday, 8, 7 central on ABC. It's what the defense does for Boston College. They turn you over and they score. Our Pacific Life game summary, Chris Crane injured. We're told it's a collarbone injury they're checking out. He's been taken for injury or for x-rays. His return is doubtful. Or like just a moment ago, the interception taken to the end zone and Wake Forest anemic in the rushing game. Coming into this football game, we mentioned Boston College and Wake Forest both tied number two in the country with 29 takeaways. That was Herzlick's 11th turnover created on the season. Five forced fumbles, six interceptions. Devon Brown at his own 15 looks for a seam. Finds one. To the outside run out at the 37. So a good return. They continue to ride him out, and there's the flag. Yeah, they didn't back away once they went to the sideline. Yeah, that's going to be a 15 yarder against Boston College on the sideline. After the player was out of bounds, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number eight, kicking team, 15 yards to exceeding spot, first down. Boston College did so much with Herzlick at that outside linebacker position. They drop him into coverage, they bring him up on the line of scrimmage. He's been dynamic as a pass rusher. And look at his athletic ability. Bearing down on Skinner, gets up. <laughs> yeah, nice work with the eye black. Looks like Batman. But the ability to go up high and make that play clean. Catch the football. Kendrick for a touchdown. How about the confidence of Skinner now? Jumps one underneath and they get to the 44. Gets it to his back. Brandon Pendergrass, but uh, he didn't make it difficult for Herzlick on that throw. No, and, and you know, Riley Skinner. I think he felt like he could get that ball off. You know, Herzlick was bearing down on him, but he was still a couple steps away. And I think Skinner was surprised at how quickly Herzlick could get up in the air and get his hands ready to catch the football. Gain of five for Mendergrass. It's second and five. Here he comes again. Nowhere to go. Still moving now. And carries Herzlick with him ahead for a couple. Herzlick has created a lot of problems for quarterbacks when he has gotten into their throwing lanes. Last week, he came off the edge, disrupted Christian Ponder. Bowman, the strong safety, stepped in front, returned the interception for a touchdown, and now this, on this play, Herzlick takes care of business himself. What a play. Take a look at his resume. Big impact two years ago as a freshman. Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator, cannot say enough about this outside linebacker. Here he comes on the blitz. They pick it up, but not much time. And Fred never turned around. The fullback ran straight down the sideline. So this offense not connecting. You know, and, and it's a big factor. Frank Spaziani and, and this defensive front structured to stop the run. Riley Skinner, a lot of responsibility being put on his shoulders. And admittedly, you talked to Steve Lobotsky, he said they've spent a good part of this season searching for a mix. Passing game, running game, some kind of rhythm. And they haven't found it today. Hop them on for the punt. Now back. Gonna let this go inside the five and just outside the three yard line. And remember, Crane is not running the show for BC. It's Dominique Davis. You got this man on defense running the show, though. You're okay. BC defense putting points on the board. 
a young lady come in the store and uh, she was shopping for a, a phone for her husband for Christmas, but she was concerned that he was going to end up finding out. I told her, I said, we can do the upgrade on your phone and we'll leave his old phone still activated. When he goes to bed, you take his SIM card out of the phone and put it in the new one and then wrap it up. Have somebody from another room call the phone and it'll ring under the Christmas tree. And she thought that was the greatest thing in the world. I could just imagine, you know, the look of excitement on his face when, when that box started going off. Order for takeout? Okay. A uh, large roast beef sub with American cheese. Pickles, lettuce, and tomatoes. No, that's not all. Ham and cheese, no mayo. Getting your order right and right on time shouldn't be a matter of luck. Why don't we just do Chili's to go instead? Thanks for calling Chili's. Trust Chili's to go to get your order right and right on time. We even give you an exact time so you can pick it up at its fresh, hot, and delicious best. It's just what you'd expect from Chili's to go. Unleash the power of your HD TV. Perfect picture. Perfect sound. Blu-ray high definition. The best way to watch movies at home ever. The Liberty Mutual Coach of the Year Award is given to the college football coach in each division who delivers results while demonstrating sportsmanship, integrity, responsibility, and excellence both on and off the field. Go to coachoftheyear.com and vote for the coach you think deserves to win in 2008. In one day, you've never seen an American Music Awards lineup bigger, hotter, and sweeter than this. With performances by Beyonce, Miley Cyrus, Kanye West, Rihanna, Christina Aguilera, Jonas Brothers, Mariah Carey, Coldplay, Alicia Keys, New Kids on the Block, Pink, Taylor Swift, plus a special appearance by Aerosmith, Steven Tyler, and Joe Perry. Can you believe it? Jimmy Kimmel hosts the 2008 American Music Awards live tomorrow, 7, 6 Central on ABC. And those were career. Fourth interception of the year where Mark Herzlick has uh, made it a 13-0 game. Boston College, and this is a defense that has shut down Riley Skinner and the Wake offense so far. Remember what they're playing for. The Atlantic Division still up for grabs. Two wins. BC goes to the ACC title game. Wake with a win here. Two Maryland losses. They get to Tampa. Dominique Davis on for the injured Chris Crane. Going to hand it off. Montel Harris gives them a little bit of room. Well, the 13-point lead gives Boston College a little bit of room with Dominique Davis entering the game at quarterback. You know Jeff Jagosinski is focused on winning this football game. But in the back of his mind, Terry, he can't help but think about Chris Crane. And I'm not sure we're going to see Crane the rest of the afternoon. That looked like a serious injury to either the shoulder or the collarbone. In fact, they have told us his return is doubtful. Davis keeps it to the outside, stiff on to the defender and run out of bounds. Should have a first down. Looked like he just got there. Josh Bush, the cornerback, the redshirt freshman from just down the road in Lexington, North Carolina, ran him out. When you talk to Dominique Davis on the sideline, you want to talk to him about ball security. You don't want any mistakes from the quarterback position. Boston College has to play to their defense and their offensive line. And I'm sure Jagodzinski and the offensive coordinator Steve Logan telling their young quarterback it's okay if we have to punt the football away. Nine first downs with that run for BC. Just two for Wake Forest so far. And if you have a flag, you threw it on that one. Well, we have a moment. We head to New York and Matt Weiner. All right, Terry, Sports Center right now is powered by Vizio. Penn State's trying to play its way to Pasadena today against Michigan State, already up 14-0. Dan Lawler has the latest touchdown. Earlier, Ohio State won a share of the Big Ten and beat Michigan for the first time five straight in series history. 42-7, it was the biggest route in the series in 40 years since Bo beat, uh, Woody beat Bo, excuse me. Matt, thank you, back here. It is Montel Harris carrying over the right side. Gain of five, you think about Penn State, the trip to Pasadena, who are they gonna play? You know, Oregon State out there, what a year they've had. When the year started, not many expected them, even though USC is still part of the BCS mix. And I think that USC, even if Oregon State, you know, Beavers control their own destiny, if they win their last two games, they go. Big game at Arizona tonight. Well, that might not be an easy one. Ball's loose. Wake has it. Wake's in the end zone. Kevin Patterson.
Who needs offense? Now we talked about Davis. And the fact that he had to focus on taking care of the football, that is a big mistake. In the shadow of your own goalpost. And all of a sudden, the touchdown by Wake Forest makes your play calling a little bit more difficult for the redshirt freshman at quarterback for Boston College. It is Sam Swank, all-time leader in the major categories as a kicker here for Wake, and he's been out with the injury, so a big cheer for him. They like to see him at BB&T Field. He's back, the senior. Well, this is what they're going to have to deal with the rest of the the inexperience of Dominique Davis. Hey, you have your tickets right? <laughs> to what, you ask? Well, the, oh, the Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship. A 48 hour celebration of ACC football played this year in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida. You know, palm trees, sandy beaches, and this year, a lot of ACC football action. So get your tickets now for the December 6th Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship. Because if you wait too long, it may be too late. Dedication. Hard work. While always looking to the future. That's what makes an ACC student athlete. Me. Developing the best of myself to become a better person. Making it all come together. Achieving, preparing for tomorrow. Then it hit me. I'm also preparing. For the rest of my life. The Atlantic Coast Conference. Striving for tomorrow. Today. How good is the senior, Alfonso Smith? Told you he's one pick away from tying the record set by Dre Bly with 20 interceptions. He's caused two fumbles already today. And, he, and he's been so good with his interceptions, game-changing plays on interceptions. He's been extremely underrated in terms of his ability to come up, get involved in the blitz game. Has a real knack for putting a helmet on the football. And Terry's only five foot nine, about 165 pounds. But he is a pretty good hitter and tackler on the perimeter, and he has turned his football game around. And the defense doing it for weight, as the BC defense did it previously. Montel Harris returning this up the middle across the 30, tripped up at the 33. So Eagles back to work in Davis. We check out our best five playbook, David. Yeah, this is going to be the zone read, the action with the running back, the keep by Davis, and watch the force by Alfonso Smith at cornerback. He's going to read the play all the way. He keeps in the leverage inside, puts a helmet right on the football, and a nice scoop and score by Kevin Patterson, the safety. That is a beautiful hit. Well targeted on the football and Kevin Patterson picks up the football on the fly. So it's first and 10 BC. Hayden going to keep it spins his way up ahead for a couple Curry in on the stop and had help. John Russell was the first man to hit him. All right time now for you got it. The Aflac trivia question coming into today's game. Wake Forest is tied for the NCAA lead with 94. Forced turnovers since 2006. Name the team they are tied with. What do you think? Thank you. I, I know this one, but somebody gave it away to me. Okay. This one thrown away by Davis and brings up third down under pressure from Aaron Curry. But what I will say on the Aflac trivia question, it's not just a flyer question. Our viewers out there. They think about it. They'll come up with the answer. Oh, we got the answer already. You can't think about it. It's right in front of them. A few seconds. That's it. Yeah, that's an obvious answer. Boston College, right? Sometimes the answer is right in front of you, right on your monitor. If you didn't get it, now you're saying, of course. What the heck is wrong with you? Third and seven. Davis, the redshirt freshman, on for the injured Chris Crane. Here come the Deeks. They run right by the Blitz, but a little bit short for Hayden. A gain of five. Wake Forest defensive game plan changes. Brad Lambert, the defensive coordinator, knows that Dominique Davis is going to be used sparingly in the pass game. 
especially after the turnover on that last possession. So the Demon Deeks are going to play the run and force Davis to put the ball in the air. It's DJ Bolden back at his own 24. Awaiting the punt. O'Brien Quigley. Gets it away. Here's Bolden on his own 22. And watch it inside the 20 at the 17. You mentioned David Norrie's musical journey around the country as we cover college football. What'd you find this week? Here it is. This week's musical journey takes us just down the road from the campus of Wake Forest to the little town of High Point, North Carolina. Now, High Point was the home to a monster jazz talent, the great John Coltrane. Coltrane's saxophone sound and improvisational genius transcended all styles of popular music. He died tragically at the age of 40, but not before forever changing America's musical landscape. Nice part of the triad here. Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point, the furniture capital of the world. Old and open over the middle, but incomplete. But uh, Coltrane, who played with what, Miles Davis and uh, Thelonious Monk? That's right, he played in the Miles Davis Quartet and you know, largely considered the most influential jazz saxophonist other than, you know, outside of Charlie Parker. I'm not aware he was raised in high point. Skinner to the outside, looks for room. He's got to run it, but not much. Runs it out of bounds near the original line of scrimmage. So, uh, do you find any furniture? That's the big uh, big question <laughs> in High Point. You get some great deals, you know, right down the road from here. There were plenty of furniture stores over there. And, uh, you know, with the economy the way it is right now, you, should, you could really find <laughs> some bargains. What was that, by the way? Right uh, in the town square or what? Yeah, it was right across the street from, uh, from City Hall there. And you know, Coltrane grew up on Underhill Street, just a couple streets down. Skinner to the air, incomplete. Nice coverage, nice play by Roderick Rollins. So it'll bring up fourth down for this Wake Forest offense. And a real nice statue, and also you saw the sign there, the tribute to John Coltrane. And you know, it's never too late for those out there that aren't into jazz music as we take a look at the breakup on the last play. But never too late to get into jazz, and I think John Coltrane's probably a good place to start if you're looking to pick up a a CD or two. If you get a Clemson next week, it might be a bit of a challenge. I might be doing some more jazz. Canal back deep. Fair catch at the 37 yard line, a punt of 37 yard. You have been to some places, including uh, the Fillmore out in San Francisco. What's, about, what's with that headshot there? <laughs> what's with that picture? Yeah, going way back into the early 80s there. Back in Westwood. Jim well, Morrison, had a great time. who was a student at Florida State. We had a lot of fun with it. And uh, a lot of our viewers out there would be surprised at all the music history at some of the college towns across the country we visit week in and week out. Outside the rock and roll scene this week. Though. All right, here we go. BC takes over first and 10. From the 37, Davis, quick drop, quick throw near sideline, three yards out of bounds. He had Brandon Robinson, who was well covered. And pressure by Kyle Wilbur, forcing that throw maybe a bit early. Brandon Robinson, which a big part of the ACC. Atlantic Division winners a year ago, and Davis getting back, getting the ball up quickly. And Boo Robinson again, forcing the action in the backfield. Wilbur was in there quickly from the edge. 0 for 3, Davis is throwing the football so far. Harris, head for maybe two. There's a chance to remind you, you know the music. Monday Night Football continues. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers taking on the Saints. An aerial assault there as well. Monday, 8.30 Eastern time on ESPN in HD. Coverage begins 7 Eastern. Monday night countdown delivered by UPS. A couple of quarterbacks. Look at the Drew Brees, 3,200 yards. Good year for Aaron Rodgers. People out there wondering, could he step into the shoes of a Brett Favre? And of course, Favre has his own dramatic story going on in New York. But 
See Aaron Rodgers for 64% of his balls he's completing. And of course, Jeff Jagodzinski with an extensive NFL background, assistant coach, Favre's coach at Green Bay. Yep. Five years with the Packers, the Falcons, uh, three years. Matt Ryan, of course, a big matchup for the Falcons with the Panthers this weekend. Matt Ryan, what a story he's been. Talking to Jags earlier this week, Terry said, I knew Matt Ryan was going to be good, but I didn't know he was going to be good this early for the Falcons. A great. Year. Wake down to one timeout. Boston College with two. Third and eight. Inside handoff. Harris. Nope. Stingy defense for Wake Forest. Aaron Curry along with Stanley Arnoux. You know, three seniors who are linebackers are new Curry and Chance McClinic, who've been a solid part of that defense for more than just this year. We'll talk to Brad Lambert as we take a look at the sideline and Boston College offense waiting to come out. But Brad Lambert said that his linebackers probably had their worst game of the season last week at Tallahassee. It was not a good tackling tackling week for that group. You know, Wake burned the time out to get the ball here. But if you're Steve Logan, you're trying to figure out what you're going to do in the second half. The offense coordinator because of that play. Chris Crane going down with a collarbone injury. Your defense is doing OK. Herzlick taking it back 34 yards for a touchdown. But then Davis, the youngster, only two games prior to this one, coughing it up. Patterson to the end zone. And they haven't really been able to move the football since Crane went out. Yeah, I mean, check that out. Brad Lambert is talking about his group of linebackers at Wake Forest a uh, week ago against North Carolina State. And of course, Boston College the linebackers had a heck of a game in Tallahassee all over the field. And, and two of the best linebacking units you'll see. East of the Mississippi. Little pressure that time. G almost got there. Holden from the 23 wrapped up right away and jumped uh, to the turf. Front of 35 yards and no return. Wake Forest takes over a minute 22 left until half. We have a moment to send it to Matt Weiner. All right, Terry, our nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week is West Virginia's Pat White, who today became the Bowl Subdivision's career rushing leader among quarterbacks all time. Also had a hand in all five West Virginia touchdowns. If that were an AT&T wireless telephone, he could text the word vote to 51234 and cast a vote for himself. Big East, uh, certain things. The receiver made a fair catch. Signal. Advance the ball after making the catch. That's a dead ball. Delay a game. Be five yards toward the spot where the ball became dead. All right, there you have it from Jeff Lanigan. So DJ Bolden running after making a fair catch signal. Can't get caught perpetrating a fair catch. And then decide to return the ball. And that's enough of a signal. That's good call. That's the eyes of the officiating crew. Nice call, as you said, Terry. Try to do it quickly and pull it back in. Once you put that up, it's tough to call it in. I figured you'd try that. Get away with it. Here's Wooster, the tight end, and uh, they expected big things from Ben Wooster this year, but he's been injured, had a number of different injuries throughout the season. You know, we talked about the lack of firepower and playmakers on the outside for Riley Skinner. Ben Wooster's injury has been a big factor. Jim Grove really expected 50 to 60 catches out of Wooster on the season. Yeah, they thought they'd get major numbers out of him. Bolden, they expected it from him. He's been the leading receiver per game in the ACC. There's a first down across the 30 and the clock will stop momentarily. Look at McLaughlin. I mean, he just looks like a Boston College linebacker. We talked to Steve Lebowski, the offensive coordinator for Wake Forest. He said this Eagles defense looks like a Big Ten defense. Wake out of timeouts here though. Skinner steps up, throws, look out. Herzlick's got it. Got another one. Inside the 20 to the 16. You got to know where number 94 is at all times. You better find him on your radar screen. He is tremendous in space as a pass coverage linebacker. A great job of anticipation, reading the eyes 
And this guy is playing like Superman the last couple weeks. He swatted Wooster like a fly. Get out of the way. <laughs> Don't even bother. He's got that big frame. He's a long athlete. And he is great in the open field. Covering the pass. Keep it on the ground with Harris ahead for a couple. They've got two timeouts left. BC, and they're going to call one right now. With 43 seconds left until halftime. Not a bad day for Mr. Hersley. No, and you talk about some of the defenses at the NFL level, the 3-4 defenses, three down linemen, four outside linebackers. I think Mark Herzlick is going to be a perfect 3-4 outside linebacker in the NFL, playing for a team like the New England Patriots. They ask that outside linebacker on the strong side to do so many things in a 3-4. The pass rush, we saw it. He came on the pass rush and the pick against Skinner, and then, of course, dropping back into pass coverage. Boston College's defense, big play outfit all year long. He okay, got four returns for touchdowns off the interceptions this year. They returned a fumble for a touchdown. The defense continuing to lead the nation in interceptions. And Wake Forest really couldn't afford that turnover for by Riley Skinner, especially with Dominic Davis in the game for the Eagles. Well, you're making it easier for him right now. Davis throws over the middle, complete to the 13. Well covered right away. And they'll call that last time out. A little bit more difficult to execute using the clock here at the end of the half with a young quarterback in the game. You got to simplify your clock drive and very important here for Wake Forest to hold the Eagles to a field goal. It's been tough going for Riley Skinner against BC. Last year, the three picks. A couple of picks today already. You go back to that game a year ago, that was not only an ACC opener for both teams, it was the season opener. And if you remember, Terry, the Demon Deacons jumped out to a 14 zip lead. There you go. You ask and you shall receive. Ryan with a big day, five touchdowns. Yeah, but he got off to a slow start in this game, and you know, Riley Skinner got knocked out through three picks, as you mentioned, Terry. In the first play from scrimmage, Matt Ryan was picked off by Alfonso Smith, and ball was returned for a touchdown. That was really Matt Ryan's coming out part. Davis on third and seven to the out to the third row. The receiver cut the other way. Now first row, but it was caught. You can't afford to give Boston College points with short fields, and especially with Davis in the game. You want to make Boston College put together long drives, move the chains with a redshirt freshman behind center. A couple big, big mistakes by the veteran Skinner. Avanovich is perfect on the day from 30 yards and 32 yards. This one again, a 30-yard try. Good hold. Right on through. So he's three for three. The defense doing its job for Boston College. Scoring points and creating opportunities for points. And a big mistake by Skinner to uh, put those three on the board for BC. That, that field goal is, is very important because of the way that Boston College's defense has been playing. You know, the Eagles have a security blanket for Dominique Davis in the way that their offensive line has been dominating up front. And Mark Herzlick, uh, he better start preparing himself for the rubber chicken banquet circuit in, uh, in December. He's going to make a few All-American teams. But you look ahead to that second half, and if you are Coach Jags or Steve Logan, you're, you're trying to figure out how you're going to move the football. This is a long way from being over, and your quarterback has not been able to move up the field. And I think that you tone things down, obviously. You, they were already taking some things off Chris Crane's plate and asking him to just manage the game, be a game manager. And I think they're going to do that on a smaller scale with Dominique Davis the rest of the way. Riley Skinner's going to have to tighten up his play a bit here in the second half. Washington and Brown back deep. He's going to split this one with 29 seconds. So it's taken 
by Washington at the 27. Good field position. What will they do here? 42 yard line and 23 seconds left. They're out of timeouts, and Skinner just threw one away. I think that you have to think about trying to get in field goal position. 23 seconds left as we look at the ACC standings. And yeah, Maryland and Florida State tonight. And this one dictates some in, in terms of that game and Wake needing a couple of Maryland losses. BC controlling their own destiny and a couple of losses over in the Coastal Division. NC State beat North Carolina. Clemson beats Virginia. So those two teams have got the race. Skinner sacked again. Jim Ramella called his name often in this game. Fourth sack for BC. The Eagles have been so good inside at the tackle position. Sometimes you forget about the defensive ends. Nice play by Ramella, keeping after it and eventually getting to Skinner in the pocket. And Boston College going to the tunnel first. And Skinner, not good numbers. Not Riley Skinner numbers. I mean, this is a guy who takes care of the football and has been terrific in his years here at Wake Forest. 16-7, your halftime score. A lot of football left to be played in a key ACC matchup in Winston-Salem. This is ESPN Rivalry Week, presented by Samsung Mobile. Two teams still alive in the ACC's Atlantic Division race. Boston College with the lead at half here in Winston-Salem, 16-7 to over the Demon Deacons. Terry Gannon back with David Norrie, the defense for each team, putting points on the board in the first half. So if you're leading the offense in the second half here, trying to figure out, David, how to move the football without turning it over. Riley Skinner to two big turnovers. If Riley Skinner's clean with the football in the first half. Wake Forest. That probably has the lead in this football game. And, and you look at Dominique Davis. What a game-changing event. Crane going down with the shoulder or the, co or the collarbone injury. I think Davis, he's going to have to focus on not turning the ball over. He wants to make sure that he plays to his defense, he plays to his offensive line. But for Riley Skinner and Wake Forest, Skinner's going to have to throw the football, and I think they're going to have to get a lot of work done in the passing game, Terry, on first and second down. And, David, the news just got worse as Wake Forest kicks off to open up the second half for BC. We're told now it is a broken collarbone suffered by Chris Crane. Harris brings it out across the 25 out to the 28. That's where they're, they'll start their first series of the second half. 16 7 BC. They control their own destiny, remember. Win this week, win next week, and they go to the ACC title game. Our Pacific Life game summary. There's the play that knocked out Crane. Yeah, and, and that was a big play, not only for this football game and the way that this football game is going to turn out here in the second half, but it really affects Boston College's prospects the rest of the way and, and their title hopes. Herzlick, what a story he was in the first half. Josh Hayden on a tailback to open up the second half. Ball's on the turf, picked up, kicked by the Demon Deacons towards the goal line. To the end zone. Touchdown. Kyle Wilber, the defensive end. And Brandon G was in there first. I believe he's the man that forced the fumble. All right, so we talk about the fact that the defense has been putting up points right out of the gun in the second half. Yeah, Dominique Davis, two big turnovers, both returned for touchdowns. And that's his priority. And Davis, all he needs to worry about is securing the football and has not done a very good job. Swank on for the extra point. Up and good. Just like that, it's a two-point game. Great defensive call by Brad Lambert, the defensive coordinator from the right side. The blitz by G. Nice hit. Violent hit from the backside. And Wilbur, that was an inadvertent kick. 
That's not a penalty if it's inadvertent moving the ball forward. The accidental kick, and what a job staying with it. A defensive end showing his athleticism, making the scoop at the goal line. And so now, if you're Dominique Davis, you know you got to put the helmet back on in a few moments and go back out and run this offense. This is the second time that's happened to him. Well, and, and the trouble for Boston College, if you're Steve Logan and you're calling plays, you worry about turnovers with a young quarterback putting the ball in the air in the passing game. But Terry, we go back to last week's game, Chris Crane twice on zone read plays, where, either, where he either gives to the tailback or keeps. Twice he kept, and he put the ball on the grass. And two times tonight, Dominic Davis, you would think that the zone read would be a safe play for a young quarterback, but two times he's not only put the ball on the carpet, but they've both been returned for touchdowns. So back to where we just were. Wake to kick off. But now it's 16 14. The Vespian and Harris back deep at their own seven. Harris from the five. To the outside has room. Across the 45 and a great return, knocked out of bounds in Wake territory. They're going to mark him out at the 46-yard line. So great field position, at least if you're Davis, you're saying, hey, I'm not backed up near my own goal line. All season long, it's Wake Forest offense. They've got trouble running the ball. Now they've had trouble getting things done in the past game. It's been left to the defense to make the plays. And the defense has responded in this game. Getting to Davis, two touchdowns on fumble returns, scoops, and scores. And we got ourselves a two-point ball game. 49-yard return, so the field position critical for BC. They'll keep it on the ground. Hayden hit hard at the line of scrimmage. Wilbur was in there. There's Boo Robinson who came with, up with the football late, but he was down already. You would imagine Steve Logan and BC is going to be very conservative right now. Well, in, in the touchdown, not only narrows this lead to two points, but for Steve Logan, you see right here, Steve Logan, the play calling gets a lot more difficult when you only have a two-point lead, and that's what's so devastating about giving up touchdowns when you're on offense. Tougher to call plays for your redshirt freshman. Inside give again, nothing doing. Aiden right into the line, Wilbur there again. The man who just scored the touchdown defensively. Wilbur's had a nice ball game. Created some pressure off the edge in the first half. Of course, he made the big play on the touchdown. And Terry Montel Harris has emerged as the go to back for Boston College. Crane, broken collarbone. That probably will force him to miss the rest of the season and maybe a bowl game. And then DJ Raji, always a huge force inside. They're working on Aaron Curry, the senior outside linebacker from Fayetteville, North Carolina, who's had a great career here. It was Curry who made the hit that knocked Crane out of the game. Three year starter. And a guy you would imagine to be watching on Sundays. Big one coming up tonight. Remember, Texas Tech and Oklahoma. This week, two of this season's biggest stories meet Heisman hopefuls, Graham Harrell and Michael Crabtree, lead Texas Tech into Oklahoma with their unbeaten streak intact. The Sooners and their Heisman hopeful, Sam Bradford, will try and dash any BCS title dreams their Big 12 rivals have. Number two, Texas Tech against number five, Oklahoma, tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Big 12's okay this year, David. Yeah, yeah, they're they're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> three Could have a three-way tie. Five. Third and ten, dangerous. Quick throw to Jarvis, complete, but short of the first down. Justin Jarvis, the junior from Bloomfield, Connecticut, his first catch of the afternoon. This might be the first time when we talk about. The Big 12, Terry, this might be the first time where that rule only two teams can go to the BCS from each conference. Right. It could be severely tested with the quality of the Texas, the Texas Tech, and an Oklahoma. And that game tonight, one of the biggest of the season. Easily. 
Alonzo Smith, who's caused two fumbles in this game already back deep. It's Billy Flutie who they bring on for the short punt. Situational punch. This one, you know, that took a wake bounce out to the 22. Just a 17-yard punt. And Flutie trying to direct some traffic. Pleading his case, but it's going to be at the 22. Step away and come back to Winston-Salem. We got a good one going on. Pivotal ACC matchup. Black Hot Hopcorn Coffee Room. Excuse me? Can I get a black coffee? Black coffee. I think we're going. Where to go? Feed you on next, please. What? We got to feed you on next, please. English. Got it. How does that make you feel? Oh, this is bollocks. What? That's disturbing, Ozzy. Make yourself heard with the full corded keyboard Samsung Propel. Move over, Eggnog. We're working this holiday party. Refreshing Sierra Mist Cranberry Splash is back. Available in regular and dyed for a limited time. So start a new holiday tradition now. America's biggest automobile company and its dealers want to help get you the loan you need. It's General Motors financing that fits. Offering access to millions of dollars and hundreds of lenders to help get you behind the wheel. It's our way of putting you and America in the driver's seat. During the red tag event, the price on the tag is the price you pay. Get a GA for $24,737 for a total value of $2,858. See your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealer. In one day, you've never seen an American Music Awards lineup sweeter than this. And for the first time, The Fray performs its new single. Jimmy Kimmel hosts the 2008 American Music Awards live tomorrow at 7, 6 central on ABC. It happened because you left, Jack. We need to protect the people that we left behind. Where are you going, Mommy? We're going on vacation, baby. People are trying to kill us. Where are you going? Let's go get them. ABC's Lost. The premiere event arrives Wednesday, January 21st on ABC. This telecast is available in high definition on ESPN HD. Here on the campus of Wake Forest, bb and Field. Moved here in the mid-50s. You know where it was originally, Mr. Norrie? No, I don't. I'm not from these parks. In but, Wake but Forest, you are. North Carolina, just outside of Raleigh. You know, you look a lot better in HD, Terry. You think so, huh? Yeah. You I'm not sure. What that's you, true. You look a lot better in HD than you do in person. In person. I got it. See, now I understand what you're saying. <laughs> now, remember, Billy Flutie was arguing with the officials as we went to break. This is a coach's challenge to see if that punt touched a Wake Forest player. So that's what we'll take a look right now. That didn't look like it no, touched no. a Wake Forest player from that angle. See Alfonso Smith saying, get away. Ooh. Maybe catch the back of the foot. Number 39. Maybe take one more look from that angle again. Watch the first bounce. Right here. Is that cat? Yeah. It may that have. Did. That might have caught the back of number 39. Chance McClinic. Chance McClinic, the, the linebacker. And I, I, I think that definitely caught his cleat. So do you think that is enough evidence to overturn the ruling on the field? I believe it is. That clearly changed the rotation of the football. And that's what you look at. If you're trying to determine if it made contact. <laughs> So 
They're taking a long time to take. This would be a, obviously a critical play. And with 12.38, you think about what's taken place in this game so far. Both teams struggling for a way to move the football and not turn it over. The first three touchdowns in the game have come from the defense. See, I'm not sure. I, I would agree with you that it looked like the rotation changed. I'm not sure it was clear enough to overturn the call on the field. And that's why it's always important what the initial call is. Uh, I think it's I think it's pretty clear that it, it made contact. And I you know I think it's it's more than enough evidence. All right. Well, I, should I can alive. disagree. That should be a live football. In fact, I'm happy to disagree with and you. I wouldn't be the first time you disagreed this year, Terry. No. And several nice angles fed from our friends down the truck. All right, here we go. After review, the ruling on the field will stand. Boston College will be charged with a timeout, and that is their final challenge for the game. That was one of the first misses I've seen in the ACC this year. I really felt that was a miss by the crew and the people upstairs. But, but not by me. I think you missed that one too, Terry. I believe. It's pretty clear that I feel you missed that one too. The replay <laughs> officials are in agreement with moi. And now that might, yeah, I said that's the first miss I've seen from the ACC in a long time. That's not the first <laughs> miss I've seen from you recently. <laughs> It's first and ten, Wake Forest. You did not enough that, evidence to overturn. But you did you think it caught the back of his foot? Yeah, but I didn't think the look was uh, clear enough to overturn. I didn't think they would. You must not be watching on HD. Here's Bolden. Short gain over the right side. Now, remember Riley Skinner in this offense. Steve Lebonski, the offensive coordinator, also trying to figure out what they're going to do. Skinner is 17 and 3 as a starter when he doesn't throw an interception. They're just 7 and 7 when he does and he's thrown two already. And we talked about going into last week's game as got a demon deacon down like Barrett McMillan. We talked about Riley Skinner only throwing interceptions in one football game going into that North Carolina State game last week. Four against Navy. Speaking of NC State, you think anybody in the ACC really wants to play NC State right now? No, I don't. With everybody healthy? It's been interesting to see some of the teams that didn't play well early that have gotten hot, including Boston College. If we look at what's at stake, and there's plenty on the line. And remember, these two teams are the last two Atlantic Division champs. Wake a couple of years ago and last year BC. No work on McMillan. But uh, how about the uh, the other division as, as crazy as the ACC has been it's finally starting to sort out today with the loss by Virginia to Clemson North Carolina losing to NC State well, coming into play today it's pretty clear that Maryland and Boston College both controlled their own destinies to get to the title game Maryland would win out they would get the berth Boston College as well and then you look over in the coastal Virginia Tech is the team that controls their own destiny after the Thursday night result and yeah, McMillan walking off under his own power that's a good sign Virginia Tech still with Duke and UVA final two games in the ACC second and seven Skinner under center this time. Going to run it over the right side to Pendergrass. Number of guys getting in the action here. They send him the other way. BJ Raji, the first one there. That big defensive tackle. And Austin Giles also in on the hit. This is just a lunch pail group. And Frank Spaziani. I think he is one of the top five defensive coordinators in college football right now. He, he ranks right there in my top five. And you look at his defense. His de now this this team in turnover margin has been in the top three in the country the last three years. Well, Penn State guy been coaching since the late 60s. From the gun on third and four, quick throw this way. Wow, Marshall Williams just drilled. As soon as he caught the football, popped. 
Roderick Rollins, watch this hit. Yeah, Rollins with the eyes, reading the quarterback all the way, and he squares up. Not a lot a receiver can do in that situation. I mean, you're thinking, catch the football first. And not a fun place to be for Marshall Williams out on the perimeter with Rollins bearing down on him. Ganell back deep at his own 34 yard line. Pop him on for the punt. Swank would normally handle that duty as well, but because of the injury, he's just kicking. Ganell another fair catch. Hasn't an opportunity to return any of these today. Outside the 40 yard line, so a 33 yard punt by Shane Papa. Man, long day for the QBs here in Winston-Salem. Crane is out with a broken collarbone. Skinner, we've seen that look throughout the game. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. H3T, the most versatile Hummer ever. I don't know, maybe you should have been the blonde. Maybe you should just listen to the game. Maybe if you shaved your legs like me, the sneak in would have worked. Maybe if you hadn't lost our season tickets in a lawsuit because you got cheapo insurance, we'd be inside the stadium watching the game dressed like men. Huh? I, I don't want to get into this she said, she said thing. Getting cut rate insurance to save a little money could end up costing a lot. Call an Allstate agent today for a free good hands coverage checkup. Are you in good hands? Some people go through life following plan A. It's predictable, expected, but my plan is to do more, to work on my terms, to open up new perspectives, to find a competitive advantage. Welcome to plan B from Brother. Our inkjet all-in-ones make your biggest ideas look even bigger. It's the smarter way to work in color. My plan is to write my success story every single day. Make the smarter choice. Plan B from Brother. You know, scientific tests have proven that when you drink Dr. Pepper slowly, the 23 flavors taste even better. Hey, I get it, because half my life's been in slow motion. Watch this. Slower is better. Trust me, I'm a doctor. That was fitted, Dr. J, right there. ESPN College Football on ABC. Brought to you by the all new 2009 H3T pickup, the most versatile Hummer ever. Samsung Mobile, proud sponsor of ESPN Rivalry Week. And Allstate, proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? The other football team's pretty good here at Wake Forest. They won the soccer national championship last week, and they get the NCAA tournament underway this coming week. They got a bye in the first round. Yeah, but it's not football. It's football. It's soccer. F-U-T-B-O-L. Not here. S-O-C-C-E-R. 16-14. Aaron Curry, by the way, who was banged up on that last series, went to the locker room. He's come back on. And BC taking over first and 10 from the 41. Montel Harris in that tailback. And we'll see if Dominique Davis can get something going offensively. This bounces away right to the black shirts, and that's number 10, Kevin Patterson, active. He scored a touchdown earlier in the game, picking up that fumble in the air. Now, back on the previous fourth, that look, it's broken. We have bad equipment on the field. Yeah, he's either hunting vampires or looking for a Home Depot. <laughs> it's, a, I mean, it's a long <laughs> pencil, is what that is. <laughs> but we can't play without this guy. It's a stake. Oh, nice. Where's the duct tape when you need it? Brand new marker. Davis under pressure. 
Arnoux all over him, and he throws it away. So it brings up third and eight. No, it's not exactly right, but it is a number. And I think if you got all three quarterbacks into a soundproof booth and asked them what sort of games they're having tonight, you wouldn't get many positive answers. Crane going down. Jeff Jagosinski losing his starter. Broken collarbone. Redshirt freshman struggling. Not only executing in the passing game, but putting the ball on the ground in the zone read pack. So what Davis can do in the air here on third and eight. Straight drop, plenty of time. Got his man over the middle, but well short of the first down. Gunnell is going to be wrapped up immediately. Carry Major. Backup cornerback from Georgia on the hit. Yeah, Kerry Major's been a great story this year. The last three or four games, he's gotten a chance to play more. Remember, he was a starter last year and lost his job to Brandon G. Stuck with it, a senior that's made some high impact plays and a nice job on that third down, getting outside and making a tackle in space. You know, David, for both teams right now, there is no threat down the field. No. So it, it makes it easy for the defense. Yeah, you can, they can lean on you in the second row. Yeah, Quigley just does get that one away. DJ Bolden watching this one take a BC bounce and then some. Inside the 10, all the way down to the 6. The Riley Skinner, you're going to have to start back up near your own end zone. Check out our ESPNU All State Standings Review. Alabama idle this week, as is Texas, but the big one between Texas Tech and Oklahoma tonight. And you look at USC on the outside looking in. The prospects looked a lot better three, four weeks ago. Of course, three teams from the Big 12 in the top five. A lot of people across the country feel that Florida is the best team right now in college football. You tell BYU a big game. Some callers dialing in here pretty soon from Tuscaloosa to, to argue that. What a story. The Crimson Tide sitting in the number one slot this late in the season. You know, this time last year, people were howling down in Tuscaloosa. Nick Saban's team was losing games against teams that were heavy underdogs. By the way, who do you like in that game tonight? Texas Tech and Oklahoma. I like Oklahoma because the game's being played in Norman and the Sooner defense should be a big story. Big hole, important run out to the 13. That was Rich Belton, the backup fullback from Chapel Hill. Now, Gives him a little bit of breathing space. Now, if you're saying, hey, does Texas Tech have a chance to win tonight? Absolutely. If, if Oklahoma can't get pressure on Graham Harrell, Texas Tech more than capable of picking you apart on offense. But that 33 and one in Big 12 home games, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty impressive stat. That's a Pete Carroll type stat when you talk USC football. Important run out to the 20. Boy, Pendergrass, they had a hold of him right away. Raji had him in his grasp and a gain of seven. Yeah, Wake Forest crowd comes alive. It's been a long time since they've seen the stakes moved on consecutive running plays and another look at Pendergrass and how he keeps his motor running, stepping through tackles. You don't see DJ Raji lose a guy very often that way. Yeah, flags before they get it underway. And it looked like. Prior to snap, false start offense, 72, five yards, still first down. Joe Looney. The true freshman, you know, Terry coming into this game, it figured to be a real battle. A true freshman playing up front at left guard, number 78. And of course, Russell Neenan, the center, has gotten the chance to start at center here the last four or five games for Wake Forest, playing against maybe the best tandem of defensive tackles in the country. Fifth penalty against Wake Forest today. They pitch it outside. Pendergrass can't turn the corner. Good pursuit inside the 20 by that BC defense. Mark Herzlick was the first guy there. Now taking a look, look at Raji and Brace, number 90 and 60. And of course, Raji with the quickness at 330 pounds to get outside, get a piece of Pendergrass. 
He is moving up the charts, Terry, with the scouts at the NFL level. Well, that's the thing about Raji and Brace next to him. They go 325, but it's not just that. I mean, anybody can eat a lot. If you're that size, they're quick. They're athletic. Quick throw, complete across the 20, but not much of a gain for Jordan Williams. We send it back to our studio and Matt Weiner. All right, Terry, here's a Taco Bell update from Berkeley, site of the big game. Stanford and Cal, and what better for a big game than a big play? Kevin Wiley to Veron Tucker, who flips it to Java at best. Neat play, best goes in for the score, 30 to three there. Notre Dame hanging on in South Bend against Syracuse. It's a six point game, just over five minutes to go. John at best, one of the best out west. Well, he is serious trouble when he gets out in the open field. <laughs> Skinner in the open field, throwing on the run, got a man, and the catch made. Up at the 46, it's DJ Bolden, did a nice job of keeping the foot in. Riley Skinner at quarterback, even though he had some problems in the first half, made a couple critical turnovers, he's a quarterback that can turn things around in a hurry with that's this type of experience and confidence. Tries the left side, the feet so dangerous, keeping his eyes up, and finding receivers down the field and Bolden a great job of helping his quarterback out on the move. Fifth catch of the game for Bolden and a gain of 24. They come this way with DJ on the ground this time into BC territory and a late flag from behind. DJ Bolden is the ball carrier. There's a flag on the play. Yeah, this looks like an illegal block below the waist. Might have been a chop block. Yep. Typically a chop block. Blocker getting into a fest defender Shot low. Block, combination high low block, number 37 and number seven on the offense. It's 15 yards to the spot of the foul. This Still is a first call. Down. This is a call where a defender's engaged already with the blocker, and then a blocker goes in low. It's a high low combination. Two offensive players getting into a defender, and that is a rule to protect. Players below the waist on defense. Yeah, Rich Belton, the man who went low, Jordan Williams up top. So just when you think they got some rhythm offensively, big throw, big catch, not a backed up. Skinner gonna step up and throw this time. Far sideline, Bolden, he threw it to the outside. DJ was looking inside. And Bolden looked like he had problems picking that football up. And again, Riley Skinner just electric with his feet when he's in rhythm in the pocket. Bought some time. This is a double move on the outside. And Bolden just can't pick up the football. He was late getting his eyes back. And Riley Skinny, Riley Skinner facing a lot of pressure throughout this game in the pocket. And Skinner, you can tell, disappointed that Bolden wasn't able to modify his route. So now it's second and 22. Skinner's got to go to the gun. BC showing blitz and they come. Quick throw, a little bit too high. Brinkman can't get there. Skinner is upset at himself on that throw. Now he had Boston College's defense caught in a blitz there. Looked like he hurried the throw a little bit. He was off the mark. He had a couple of those throws last week, Terry, at Tallahassee. His accuracy escaped him a couple times and not. Not characteristic of a Riley Skinner. Down the road in Raleigh. Gets the Wolfpack. Going to run it up the middle. Big game. Up to the 48. Pendergrass, the quick hitter, and a gain of 14. Herzlick, though, on the stop. Yeah, that was Boston College down at Tallahassee last week. I knew what you meant. Yeah. Brings up fourth down now. They needed a whole bunch. Spaziani on the sidelines, always with the enthusiasm and the just highly animated. It's great effort out of his defense. Bunnell back at the 15. High punt for Coppin and another fair catch. He dropped it. Fell right on it though at the 21. So a punt of just 31 yards. You're waiting for an offense to, to click a little bit, some rhythm to set in. It hasn't happened for either team yet. So what do you rely on? Defense and special teams. They're looking for a big play. 
You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. to get more out of your tires it's time to get cooper because now during cooper's national take the money and ride event you'll not only get unbeatable performance you'll get a 50 dollars rebate by mail when you buy four qualifying cooper tires cooper's take the money and ride event get your rebate form and all the details at a participating cooper dealer or at coopertire.com but do it today the road and your 50 dollars rebate are waiting Honey, I found the perfect tree. Really? What makes it perfect? It comes with a present. Like her, only gold is treasured. So this Christmas, thank her for choosing you with a gift of gold from Kay. That's just one more reason Kay is the number one jewelry store in America. This the one, ma'am? Yes. This is the one. Every kiss begins with Kay. Skins game next Saturday and Sunday on ABC. It's been all defense so far. 16-14, Boston College over Wake Forest. Rivalry week presented by Samsung Mobile. Three field goals, three touchdowns, none of them offensive touchdowns. ACC update. Boston has it by Dr. Pepper. Aaron Kelly comes in here. You know, they beat uh, Virginia today. All-time leader in receptions. Virginia, North Carolina eliminated tonight. An important matchup for the state at Maryland. Davis, the quick pitch. Out to Hayden trying to turn the corner. Good game on first down. Aaron Curry ran him out along with Kevin Patterson. And Steve Logan, the offensive coordinator for BC, continuing to trust Dominique Davis on some higher degree of difficulty ball handling, a pitch. Zone read disasters have taken place already in this football game. Fumbles by Davis, but to move the football, I think you're going to have to trust him in some of those situations. Yeah, you can't eliminate everything. You think about playing it safe and not throwing the football, but those are high-risk plays as well. You could always line up in the eye and just hand the ball off, but uh, BC playing against a pretty tough defense. They're not going to be able to do that. They are going to hand it off this time, and ahead for the first down goes Hayden. So they'll move the chains, 346 and counting here in the third. You're a music man. They tell us it's the best lineup ever in the American Music Awards. We've got Beyonce, Alicia Keys, Coldplay, Jimmy Kimmel's there to hand out the awards. 7 6 Central on ABC. And I watched the ABC promo, a lengthier promo earlier this week. It took them about 30 seconds to get through that lineup. <laughs> a lot there. Hayden, by the way, 75 yards on 16 carries today. Davis to throw, got his man. And a first down, run out of bounds at the 45 is Gannell. His third catch of the game. This throw has to be very encouraging for Jeff Jagosinski. The backfield action, play action, and watch Davis place this ball to the outside, took a little bit off it. Gannell with a crisp route on the outside, working against Kerry Major, the corner. Yeah, Major gave him just enough space to get past that marker. So first and 10 from the 45. Aiden getting most of the work this week with the 75 yards. Harris was the man last week against the Seminoles. So against Josh run out. Chip Vaughn was there, Aaron Curry as well. That was not the best pitch that we've seen from Dominique Davis in this game. That was a, a bit of a misfire and a nice job by Hayden to gear down make sure that he secured the pitch and we look at 
play selection. First half for Boston College. Very different picture here in the second half with Crane out of the game. The only 11 plays. There goes Purvis in motion with the flag. Snap infraction. Offense number 65. Five yards. Still second down. Matt Tennant in the center. Both coaches kind of uh, stoic this afternoon. I'm not sure that they feel like they know what they're going to get. And give a lot of credit to the Boston College defense. And then Wake Forest knocking Crane out of the football game. Under pressures, Davis gets away. Still up to the 45. Nice job escaping that rush. Kevin Patterson chasing him down in a gain of three. Well, that's what Wake Forest needs to do defensively. Get this Boston College offense into some second and longs. Second and 13 play here. Pressure. Deeks love to bring linebackers. And a good job of tackling in the open field to force a third and nine. Crowd sensing a big third down coming up. And I think you're right in terms of the coaches. You become a bit tentative because you're not sure of what your offense is doing. And you're waiting for that big play to happen defensively. Here comes a blitz. Smith trying to get to Davis. Still under pressure. And down he goes at the 33. And Alfonso Smith got in there initially, and then it was Stanley Arnoux and a loss of 11. Wake Forest has done such a great job on the corner blitz, and this is going to be Alfonso Smith again. What a valuable part of this defense he's been on the pass rush. He forces Dominique Davis out of the pocket. He gives time for his defensive mates to close in. Now remember, Wake almost got to the last punt from Ryan Quigley. They don't go after this one. Although Alfonso Smith came close. Folding picks it up and returns it. Nice play just to get to that football. He's going to bring it back across the 35. Another reminder, Monday Night Football coming your way. As the Packers take on the Saints. Good shootout at quarterback in that one. 8.30 Eastern time on ESPN in HD. Monday Night Countdown. Delivered by UPS starting at 7 o'clock. So after the 42-yard punt, 13-yard return by Bolt. First and 10 from the 35. Looks like Alfonso Smith might have tweaked his back on that last play. And off, timing wasn't there from the start. Josh Adams wrapped up for a loss. Robert Francois in quickly. So this offensive line, you talked about the challenges that they're facing today and as the game goes on and you have no real deep threat everyone coming up into the box defensively well and, and to make plays and to make yards I feel when a defensive line is dominating the game when you're not getting push up front I think you have to take some chances throwing the ball on first down second down on those downs where a defense would be expecting the run that's the way you create some time and here comes Herzlick on the blitz they want to throw it Adams still looking now he's going to run. Yeah, good coverage downfield. McLaughlin on the hit. He ran him out, but uh, the secondary did a nice job. Another way to create some yards is to use your specialty plays. And last week, Wake Forest scored on the, the touchdown throw from Bolden down the field to Williams against North Carolina State and told us they'd probably have one ready for this week. It, if that's it, it didn't work. We head to the fourth, 16-14 BC. Your kids give you more than they'll ever know for Dada. Here. For Daddy. Happy Father's Day, Dad. For Dad. For Pops. And for the love your kids give you, there's one special gift. Life insurance from New York Life ensures your loved ones will always be taken care of. With 163 years of financial strength, it's the most selfless gift you can give. New York Life, the company you keep. 
During the Hummer Red Tag event, when you see some red, you save some green on all 2008 and 2009 Hummer models. Like the all-new H3T, the nimble, tough, mid-size pickup with full-size capability, or the rugged mid-size H3 with lower annual fuel costs than many SUVs. During the first ever Hummer Red Tag event, the price on the tag is the price you pay for incredible values like this. Visit your local Hummer dealer. Tuesday, January 6th. Nobody die! The doctors of Scrubs have found a better place to operate. Mrs. Gallagher, you look very beautiful today. Yeah, your jaundice makes you glow. And that place is ABC. I'm so happy. They've even brought a friend to heat things up. Clear. <gasps> Courtney Cox guest stars. Ha, uh, and might I add, ching. Scrubs, all new episodes premiering Tuesday, January 6th, 9, 8 central on ABC. Saved by zero. Now, for a limited time only, you can get amazing zero APR financing on your favorite Toyota. Saved by zero. That's zero percent financing on 12 different models. With savings like these, no wonder Toyota has the best overall value of any brand. So hurry in now and see how much zero can save you on a new Toyota. Save by zero. Save by zero. Millionaire, weeknights at 7.30 on ABC 45. That man may need some road game, but he can play some football. <laughs> He's got the Mohawk going, Mark Herzlick. A couple interceptions today, return one for a touchdown, and it has been a defensive show today in Winston-Salem. Terry Gannon, David Norrie here. Third and ten for Skinner in the Deacon. Spins away, still up. Could have run if he wanted to, throws high and incomplete. And there's an example of Skinner just a little bit off today. Uh, yeah, and he was just a magician to escape the pressure in the pocket on that play. That Brandon. But now who was it out on the outside? It looked like he had Marshall Williams come free on the sideline. And that was just a great play by Riley Skinner to escape to the outside. That was Brown. That was Devon Brown. But what a play to escape. And then, as you said, Terry, his accuracy escaped it. Pop him on for the punt. You know. Fair catch. Yeah, he did raise the hand. Barely, but he did get that up there. So the fair catch at the 24 after the 41 yard punt. Beep, Slate Sanchez's phone here reporting from the demolition site. Slate and the rest of the Action News team don't have AT&T, which means no bars out here on the outskirts of town. So we didn't get that call about the new blast zone, which is now here instead of way over there. I'm Slate Sanchez, and I'm about to be the news. Switch to the network with the best coverage, AT&T. More bars in more places. Get an exclusive quick messaging phone for $79.99 after mail-in rebate. Hi, we're here for sign and drive. Hi. I just leased a Passat for no money down. She wants one too. Or a Jetta. A Passat. A Jetta. A Passat. A Jetta. A Passat. Our new computer can match you to the perfect Volkswagen. Then you drive it away. Signature reveals a need for safety and individuality. Perfect match. A Passat. Jetta. This event is getting very interesting. Sign and drive is back. We select 2009 models for zero down, zero due at signing, and no first month's payment. It's what the people want. You girls have fun. It's time to unleash your inner Santa. 
Head to Santa's other workshop, The Home Depot. The one place with everything you need to make your home festive, inside and out. All at guaranteed low prices, now even lower. Bring the holidays home for less at The Home Depot. Monday, the two-night season finale event begins. The final three face off, and there will be one champion. Everybody better get out of the way. That's my title. ABC's Dancing with the Stars live two-night finale event begins Monday, 8, 7 central on ABC. Back with our Pacific Life game summary just underway here in the fourth quarter in a chilly Winston-Salem. Defense getting it done. Wake Forest with the lone touchdown here in the second half. There's like a couple of interceptions, including the one that he brought back for a touchdown. Yeah, it is chilly. They're kept in the low 20s right now. First and 10, BC taking over. Big hole for Montel Harris. Closes quickly up near the 30. So you wonder about this. Remember, BC with two wins. A win this week and next week, and they win the Atlantic Division. Wake needs a win, and then two Maryland losses, including the game tonight against Florida State. But if Jeff Jagodzinski's club gets by this one, can Dominique Davis run the show next week and get a win? Well, I think that Coach Jags just wants to get in that position, and then he'll worry about that next week. Right now, he is in a dogfight in this game. Two-point ball game. Wake Forest playing on their home turf. After the gain of six, it's second and four. Robinson trying to get outside. Not against that speed on the edge, though. Chip Vaughn from Fairfax, Virginia. And Wake Forest has been playing a lot of man-to-man -man defense as of late. And you know, they figured to match up outside. They have man-to-man. -man. That gives you an extra defender. And that's why Boston College, Terry, has had so much trouble moving the ball on the ground. It's tough to take care of an extra defender. You don't have enough blockers. And you got to be careful here on third and five. Just three of 11 today on third down. Under pressure, hit as he throws, complete but short. Montel Harris, but Aaron Curry was all over Dominique Davis. Yeah, Aaron Curry was coming on the blitz straight up the gut. And he forced Davis to get rid of the ball quickly. Nice reaction on the outside by Chip Vaughn. And when you're playing with the blitz in front of you, you got to make sure that you don't allow that wide receiver to get his depth beyond the chains. Vaughn closed nicely. So to press the issue here, make something happen. And block this punt, you think? Know? Looks like they're backing out. Alfonso Smith was close the last time. Here they come. They got it. Inside the 10, inside to the end zone. He was down before he got to the end zone. They're going to mark it at the one. And you had the feeling. It was going to take a special teams play, some kind of big play from the defense or special teams. Wake just got it. Now, Wake didn't even have their full complement up on the line of scrimmage, and that might have been Gilo Orange, number 57. It was. And Alfonso Smith just a half step away from scoring after the scoop. What a breakdown in special teams for Boston College. And Wake Forest finding ways without an offense this afternoon to win the football game. They're taking a look, a closer look at where it should be spotted. Right now they have it at the one. But David, they were close the last couple of times, and, and they really hadn't gone after the punt. Smith was close, and this time they get to him. Well, it didn't even look like Wake Forest was going to come after this punt. They dropped a couple defenders off the line of scrimmage. The Eagles were unsound in their protection. It'll be first and goal wherever they spot it here. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Wake Forest ball at the one yard line. Let's take one more look. Only bringing six. And Orange just found his way through that group of defenders. So it's first and goal. Demon Deacons from the wall. 
Elton Pendergrass out of the eye. Here comes Bowman in motion. Touchdown, easily. Rich Belton on the catch. And Riley Skinner didn't have to be perfect. That's a great play call. And you got to look at Jeff Jagosinski, the head coach for Boston College, talking to himself. He knows just how difficult it's going to be to come back. He's lost the lead, and he's going to have to come back behind a redshirt freshman who's only played in two games this season prior to tonight. Slank for the extra point. Perfect again. Wait to stay alive in the race for an Atlantic Division title. Takes the lead here in the fourth. So I grind you. I'll never let it keep me down. Cause I, I can do. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Presented by Best Buy. So your computer here can match my signature to the Volkswagen that's right for me? Then you drive it away for nothing down. With just a signature. Signed and drive. All right. Curvaceous tea indicates a love for clean lines and performance. Perfect match, Tiguan. I like that. Smooth strokes indicate a passion for body waxing. That's dumb and not true at all. This event is getting very interesting. Sign then drive is back. We select 2009 models for zero down, zero due at signing, and no first month's payment. It's what the people want. I got $583 in cashforgold.com. All I did was look through my drawer full of jewelry that I never wear. Turn your unwanted or broken jewelry, gold, silver, platinum, rings, chains, and bracelets into cold hard cash from cashforgold.com. I had no idea my gold jewelry was worth so much money. With gold, silver, and platinum at their highest value in decades, cashforgold.com is able to give you top dollar for your unwanted jewelry. And because we own our refinery, we can cut out the middle man, which means more cash in your pocket. I sent in my diamond wedding band for my first marriage and got money the very next day. Just call the number below and ask for your free, prepaid, insured refiner's return pack. Fill the envelope with your unwanted or broken gold, silver, and platinum jewelry and mail it to our processing center. A safe, reliable transaction with satisfaction guaranteed. Call 1-800-652-9014. Call now. Whoa, it has no keyboard. And then, did it just click? You've never clicked a screen before. Is that supposed to happen? And is it supposed to feel so right? It feels like a keyboard, just no keys. What kind of mad genius is behind this? Oh, right. America's largest 3G network introduces the world's first touch screen Blackberry. Only from Verizon Wireless. ESPN College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Best Buy. You happier. Aflac. Ask about it at work. And the Volkswagen Signed in Drive event. German engineering for practically just a signature. Chilly weekend in Winston-Salem. Just heating up a little bit for the Demon Deeks fans, though. 21-16 after the block punt. Nice toss to the end zone from Skinner to Belton. Ah, can you feel it? The holiday season? Yeah, it did look a little like Christmas time there, didn't it? It's almost upon us. Wow. Now you think that that thing just blew up in that yeah, guy's face and he got he's pasted his, by a hot dog wrapper. And his hands are too cold to take out of his pockets to take a <laughs> look. The squid kick. Harris from the 18. Hit hard out at the 29. Take a look at that last touchdown, David. Oh, this is a terrific sell. Play action. Watch Riley Skinner come out, execute the fake to Josh Adams, and the responsibility frees it right here. Look at Paul Anderson, the strong safety. He's looking inside, and yet the ball's coming out already from Riley Skinner. Anderson going with the run fake, and that is excellent execution from the quarterback position on the sell. Now, if you're BC, you only trail by five, and you open up the offense a little bit on first down. Going behind the receiver, they're still scrambling. 
but it's an incomplete pass. It was Jarvis who was out there. Brandon G on the coverage. But I, I was just going to mention, do you feel, if you're Steve Logan, like you do have to open it up now a little bit? Well, you do have to open things up. You haven't had a lot of success with the zone read play. And you take a look at some of the man, unusual events that have taken place in this Wake. football game. Yeah, look at this. Wake only 114 total yards, only five first downs, only two of ten on third down, but they leave. That's a lot of owners to leave. Quick throw out to Jarvis. He lost it. Had it and dropped it. Matt Weiner, what's going on elsewhere? A lot going on in South Bend. Sports Center right now, powered by Vizio. Syracuse has beaten the Irish. Cameron Dantley to Dante Davis with 42 seconds left. Brandon Walker's 53 yard field goal attempt came up short. The Irish missed three kicks on the day, and the Orange get their third win of the season at Notre Dame 24 23. Make a change, get a W. <laughs> That's how it works. Quick throw. Can he hold on this time? Yeah, he does. But going to back up. That's Jarvis again. In his second catch, but nothing doing offensively. And then the defense for Wake Forest just applying more and more pressure now. You know, Terry, four touchdowns in this game. The first three came on defensive scores, and we were a yard away from a fourth score on a punt block. That would have been four non offensive touchdowns. When was the last time you've seen that happen in a college football game? Unbelievable. Wrigley inside his own 20. They don't come after this one, though. And Bolden announces a take ABC roll inside the 20. So they. It's down at the 18. 50 yard punt with that long roll. You show the wake offense hasn't got much going, but uh, the defense certainly did. Knocked out Crane early in this one. If you weren't with us, he's got a broken collarbone. Then Patterson taking it in. Another fumble. Both of those caused, by the way, by Alfonso Smith. And the block punt just a moment ago. And that's where we are. 21 16. Wake Forest. Ooh, that's a dangerous pass. Complete, though, in the near sideline. And it's Brinkman with the catch. Second catch of the afternoon for Brinkman, but Skinner fortunate. And Riley Skinner, he's a seasoned quarterback and a guy that can get his confidence back in a hurry. You know, the two big mistakes on the picks by Herzlick in the first half. But you can just see his leadership abilities and carrying this team with his confidence in the fourth quarter now with the lead. Pendergrass, the redshirt freshman outside to the 35. Solid gain on first down. And if you're a defensive player for Boston College, you've been on the sidelines. You've watched the futility. You're wondering where the points are going to come from. Alfonso Smith. You mentioned Terry. He made the two big hits on the defensive scores. And then almost scooped and scored on the block punt. And remember his calling card, his interceptions. Yeah. He's yeah. one away from Dre Bly's record. Showing us he can get it done in a lot more ways than picking footballs off in the secondary. Pitch it out, well covered. And outside by BC. Pendergrass wrapped up right away. You know, he talked to uh, Alfonso Smith yesterday, asked him about that record, what it would mean to him. And it, it, it wasn't an arrogant thing. He said, I have so much respect for Dre Bly and what he did and how good he was and watching him, it would really mean a lot if my name could go next to him. Really enjoyable to sit down and visit with that young student athlete. And Alfonso Smith just lights you up with personality. Biggest impact players in college football. Skinner from the gun, third and seven, and got about six and a half. Complete out to Andrew Parker, the freshman from Jacksonville. His first catch. This is going to be short of the first down. You always urge your receivers and tight ends to get the necessary distance, get beyond the chains, but sometimes you're forced to come back to the football. And Parker has a bright future ahead. 
Riley Skinner, Terry, continuing to shade the ball away from danger and fit the ball into tight spaces down the field. See if Gannell has a chance to return this one. Hasn't had much of a chance today. Most have been fair catches. Moving along that right side, it looked like. Oh, he got there quickly. No flag there. And another fair catch at the 16. There's some pressure on top of the punter. He gets it off a 43-yard punt. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. This older gentleman comes up to me and he was like, my grandkids have moved away. Um, their father is a missionary in Africa. And I said, how would you like to see your grandkids opening their presents as they're opening their presents Christmas Day? And I showed him webcams. And he just kind of looked at me and he was like, webcam? What's a webcam? You can see them, you can talk to them. He was just amazed. But he just, he had no idea that technology could work like that. It was awesome. Hi, we're here for Sign and Drive. Hi. I just leased a Passat for no money down. She wants one too. Or a Jetta. A Passat. A Jetta. A Passat. A Jetta. A Passat. Our new computer can match you to the perfect Volkswagen. Then you drive it away. Signature reveals a need for safety and individuality. Perfect match. A Passat. Jetta. This event is getting very interesting. Sign and Drive is back. We select 2009 models for zero down, zero due at signing, and no first month's payment. It's what the people want. I don't miss work this Christmas. Yeah, how will you pay for things like food, electricity, Ooh, and bill bills? Gadzooks! You need a backup plan. Oh, oh, oh. That's why we have Affleck. So I'll have cash to help pay bills. Ah. Right, but what if you're still not better by Christmas? Hmm. Affleck! Affleck, ask about it at work. Rudolph's better. But what? now Blitz is ah. sick. Ah. Scientific tests show that when one drinks Dr. Pepper slowly, one can truly relish the 23 flavors. Would that we could savor all our relationships, much as the conductor savors his Corral Nocturna, slowly. Comments, caller? Only one, Fraser. You never savored me slowly. Well, Lilith, I guess I finally found the right icy doctor. Fraser, I don't... Slower is better. Trust me, I'm a doctor. In just one day, the 2008 American Music Awards, live tomorrow on ABC. 8.58 left in a key ACC matchup. Wake Forest with the lead, 21-16 over Boston College. Chilly night. Kirk Hepburn, our low end zone. How you doing, Kirk? Bundling up. We moved our photogs around a little bit because it looks, looks comfortable there. You think so, huh? Yeah, that's right. Cesar Haseldo. He had a rush home to San Antonio. He's usually on that particular camera. And his wife had a baby boy, Nicholas, his first. So uh, congratulations, Susan. See you back out on the road very soon. Quick throw to Harris out at the 20 complete. Only one play here in the second half for BC, over 10 yards. It was a 13-yard pass play, but that's it. Not a lot of punch, not a lot of potency in the passing game. Obviously, we talked about Davis's lack of experience and you know, the secondary for Wake Forest, you want to make sure that you don't let an eagle get by you. Play action fake on first and second down, and the, you can see the safeties not quite as aggressive up in the run game. Steve Logan up in the booth trying to dial up a winner for Boston College. Davis has time. Oh, throws it right over the middle, and only black shirts around there. That came very close to being picked off. Looks like Arnu, the middle linebacker, and Hunter Haynes both had a shot at the pick. Dominique Davis very lucky to get that one back. The numbers for Crane early, and now Davis. But eight completions for just 31 yards. And we'll see if. Wake Forest goes after him now on third and seven. Four man rush, incomplete, broken up. Brandon Robinson was there, but Chip Vaughn got a hand in. Wake Forest bringing four on the rush. 
They drop seven into coverage and just reading the eyes of Dominique Davis. And Davis not showing a lot of threat throwing the football. Three defenders converging. A very tough assignment against this defense to get off covered receivers, move on in your progression. This is a baptism by fire for Dominique Davis getting into this situation with an ACC title on the line potentially. Quigley. Bolden coming up. They'll have great field position if he holds on. And he does. Dumped right at the 47, but it it's in BC territory. Under eight minutes to go here in Winston-Salem and another big one. As big as they get, really. Texas Tech during the regular season against Oklahoma. Number two, number five, Big 12. This is uh, in Norman, 8 o'clock Eastern. Rivalry Week presented by Samsung Mobile. There was a flag at the end of that play. During the kick, excuse me, during the return, illegal block in the back, number 56 on the receiving team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So Wake's job to hold on to the ball little more difficult but they start at the 44 yard line still a pretty critical penalty because you want to make sure that if Boston College is going to score a touchdown in this game that they're going to have to drive the ball a long ways and move the chains with Dominique Davis and look at the numbers from Skinner picking things up here in the second half quick pitch Pendergrass cuts back fights his way brings hers like with it a gain of nine. He had Mark Herzlick on his back, and he got an extra couple of yards. Well, Josh Adams had a great year as a freshman last year for Wake Forest, and it was a surprise, I know, to you and me, Terry, the quality and the carries, the quality of the carries and the number of carries that Pendergrass was getting early on this season. We saw this team against Ole Miss. Well, you get a look at Pendergrass on that last carry and the ability and the strength to continue down the field with Herzlick. Attached to him. And then Adams was out with the ankle injury. Came back and played late last week. They run straight ahead. And power their way across our yellow line. We'll see if they get the spot. Rich Belton, who caught that last touchdown pass. That is a huge first down for Wake Forest in this game. Now they've got the ball in positive territory. We take a look up here. Boston College, only two timeouts left. Every time Wake Forest moves the chains on this drive, Jeff Jagosinski knows that his prospects for an ACC title appearance or title game appearance are leaking away. Yeah, even though they control their own destiny, a loss and they're done in terms of the title. And off the Pendergrass, another big game. Close to another first down, may have it. Yeah, he does, gain of 11. Good block up front, McMillan on the right side of the line. Davis. Give some credit to this offensive line for Wake Forest. With the lead, you have to run the ball late to win football games, and it looks like they're taking care of the big boys up front. A couple good blocks against Brace and Raji. And Terry, it looks pretty apparent that Boston College is getting some of the starch taken out of them on defense as front seven. Been on the ground, Pendergrass a short game as the clock continues to run. So 6:20 and counting. And if you're Jagodzinski in this coaching staff, you're thinking, well, not only do we need to stop Wake here, but maybe come up with some kind of big play and turnover because our offense hasn't moved the ball at all. Well, and, and that's why Wake Forest, you know, veteran quarterback like Riley Skinner, stepping into the huddle and looking at the skill athletes and making sure that everybody knows that. The highest priority is to not put the ball on the ground. And they go to the eye. Wooster, the tight end in motion. They're going to throw it. They look to at least. Skinner, no, he's going to run it. Brought down violently at the 30. Guess who? Herzlick. Just a Pennsylvania linebacker. And all that that means. Boston College, Wake Forest, bb &T Field. And Wake and BC trying to get to that ACC title game. BC with a win here and next week would go. Wake with a win here and two Maryland losses would go. So they got a root for BC next week, which is a good ironic. 
And I think Wake Forest may be in four down territory here because Oppenovichus has not hit a field goal beyond 36 yards. They are not yet in his range. Incomplete thrown underneath. Donnie Fletcher had the best opportunity to catch that ball. Check that. Obviously, it's going to be Swank or Popham that come in. But, you know, Riley Skinner has tried to fit some balls into some tight situations. Here comes Swank. It's the first time we've seen him in over a month. Well, he's got the distance, but he's got the quad injury. And he's been out for six games, even today. I mean, Jim Grove didn't know whether he could go. He goes out there and he tries to warm ups and sees if he's got the leg strength. This from 47 yards. With the, sore, with the sore quad muscle, distance could be a problem. No good. And that's what happens, too. You try to get a little extra. And you're going to pull it well and if you're going to suffer an injury as a soccer style kicker it's usually going to come on the quad it's a little tender and as you said terry swung it into the impact zone a little quickly you've done that with an eight iron haven't you yeah Borden once uh, one of the best ever here but not this time still a five point game hi welcome to sign the drive so we could lease the Jetta or the EOS for nothing down? With just a signature. How do we decide? Our new computer can match your signature to the Volkswagen that's right for you. Swollen loops indicate a nurturing personality and an appetite for two. Perfect match, Rutan. I thought I felt nauseous. Oh my, more Rutan babies. Sign and drive is back. We select 2009 models for zero down, zero due at signing, and no first month's payment. It's what the people want. Get a lot of choice for a little cash. Change for a change and you get it fast. And it was 79. The Liberty Mutual Coach of the Year Award is given to the college football coach in each division who delivers results while demonstrating sportsmanship, integrity, responsibility, and excellence both on and off the field. Go to coachoftheyear.com and vote for the coach you think deserves to win in 2008. Black hot half cup of coffee, please. Excuse me? Can I get a black coffee? Black coffee. I know, thank you. Where to go? Feed you more legs, please. What? We got to feed you more legs, please. English. Got it. How does that make you feel? Oh, the same as bollocks. What? That's disturbing, Ozzy. Make yourself heard with the full corded keyboard Samsung Propel. How did all this happen? It happened because you left, Jack. We need to protect the people that we left behind. Where are you going, Mommy? We're going on vacation, baby. People are trying to kill us. Where are you going? Let's go get him. ABC's Lost. The premiere event arrives Wednesday, January 21st on ABC. Good look at Wake Chapel here on the campus of Wake Forest. The scene of two presidential debates. George Herbert Walker Bush back in 88 against Dukakis and then W against Al Gore in 2000. 18 total yards in the second half by BC. We got to change that right now if they're going to have a chance. This one's complete, but a short game. Yeah, G read it perfectly. Harris on the catch. That was a nice throw to Harris. And there have been a couple throws here in the second half from Dominique Davis that have given Boston College glimpses of hope. And what you have to do here is you can't be too greedy. Don't try to fit the ball in down the field in traffic. Keep the football clean, and Davis has shown the ability that he can move the ball throwing. And make in the pocket for Harris again, and again, just a short game. Fifth catch of the game for Harris. It might not be a bad time for a quarterback draw from Davis. And with this clock sneaking underneath four minutes to go, Boston College with only two timeouts. You start wondering whether Coach Jags is going to be excited about punting the ball away if he doesn't pick it up here on third down. That is 
start thinking about going for it on fourth down potential. Here comes the blitz. Quick throw, complete, and that should be a first down. It is. He held onto it. Brandon Robinson, nice catch. Well, this is a big completion in a pressure situation. This is not an easy throw for a redshirt freshman. Ball placed right over the shoulder. Brandon Robinson has made so many big plays over the years for Boston College. Four years he's been a receiver. He seems to always be sure handed in the biggest moments. That last play working against Kerry Major. Number eight on the list in terms of receptions, number nine in terms of yards, and that was a big one. First and ten. Davis, he's going down. Antonio Wilson, number 34, from the edge. Wilson, a guy who you talk to the other players, they say whether he's on the field or not, you hear him. He's always talking, always leading. Coach Jags and Steve Logan, his offensive coordinator, know that you know, if, you, if you throw an incomplete pass, if you don't pick up yards on first down, that's okay, but you don't want negative yards. And I think on first or second down, might not be a bad time to spring a quarterback draw. Wake Forest bringing the pass rush with aggressiveness. Wants to throw it. Now he wants to run. It's too late. Drop right at the line of scrimmage. Tristan Doherty, number 55, got to him late. I mean, you think about what Jeff Jagodzinski accomplished last year. The 11 wins. Going to the ACC title game. A chance to do it again after a slow start this year, but it comes down to the next couple of plays. Yeah, and Davis not quick enough to escape the rush. You saw Jagosinski coming out on the field being very demonstrative. He would say, no, do not use the first of our two timeouts. Wanted to save the timeout. Third and 13. To the air. Man and coverage complete at the 22. What a great catch. Gennell coming back for the football. Brandon G was right there with him. That was all Rich Gannell. Now this is one of the biggest plays of the season for the Eagles. And how about the strength by Gannell fighting over two defenders at the top of the route. That was Brandon G, one of the more seasoned cornerbacks in the ACC. What a play. Gain of 36. First and 10 from the 22. Quick drop, quick throw, near side to the end zone, incomplete. Robinson had it up in the air and then he lost it on the way down. Working one on one with Kerry Major. Brandon Robinson putting pressure on Major and Major a nice job to get his eyes back to the football. Not a bad throw by Dominique Davis to give Robinson an opportunity to go up. Make the catch on a go-ahead score. Wow. There is the lone setback. Second and ten. Davis has time over the middle. Complete Robinson towards the end zone. No signal. He's down at the one. You talk about big plays on this drive. Well, Davis has made some great throws. He got saved by Gunnell. Had to put the ball up for grabs. Gunnell kept the drive alive. And it was not a tight spiral, but the ball was accurate. He placed it right on Robinson and another huge catch by number two. I don't think he got in. We're going to take a look to see if he was at the one or if the ball crossed. And how about the drive being put together by the redshirt freshman getting a lot of help yeah, right there. from his experienced wide receiver core. I think it's pretty clear he didn't score Terry as you were saying there. Boston College probably talking a bit here on the sidelines about the two point conversion if they score here. And they're going to go for two. Well. Just to revisit this, I mean, you think about the third down plays they've come up with on this drive. And the microphone not working at a critical moment. 
but the play's going to stand. The, the spot's going to stand. Eight plays, 69 yards on this drive. When Jim Grobe had to believe his defense certainly was going to hold him. Well, and, and if his defense doesn't hold, you got to utilize your timeouts here. Jim Grobe is going to be able to, to keep a lot of time on this clock with his three timeouts. Boston College going to pound away on the ground. There are the numbers. And five of six, and it was really the completion to Gunnell that got BC the big chunk down the field. Wake just took a timeout, David. That's a smart timeout because after the first down and they sorted things out on whether it was a touchdown or not, they're going to wind the clock before first down. So Jim Grobe right on top of it, calls a timeout. They only lose a second. Yeah, and you're in that spot. If you're Jagodzinski, you'd like to use the time here, but you haven't scored yet. Yeah, absolutely. You'd like to bleed the clock. If Wake didn't have timeouts left, you try to take that clock all the way down and not give Riley Skinner an opportunity to bring his team back. Terry was just last week with the game on the line. Riley Skinner did everything he needed to do to come down the field. Had a bit of a drop from Marshall Williams on a great ball, a third down ball. We saw Riley Skinner with just over a minute to go against Mississippi. Take his team down the field for a game winning field goal by Swank, a 41 yarder. This game is far from over. Yeah, five times he's done that in the fourth quarter. Come back and win. Now remember that nothing's a given right here for BC. Not at all. Remember Florida State, Marcus Sims had inside the one in the fumble as Florida State was going to win over Georgia Tech. I think we'll probably see a quarterback sneak here from Davis. Ball sitting inside the one. You don't want to allow penetration. When you get involved in handoffs, there's always a possibility for a fumble, a defensive lineman getting through, creating contact and forcing the ball loose. The officials meeting to talk about the clock. And how much time should be up there? And they put a second or two back on the clock. Jeff Flanagan may be trying to talk right now. I mean, that microphone not working. Yep, and they'll do it the old fashioned way. So if they took it back up to a minute 19, at least for the time being. Jim Grove, one of the sharpest minds in football when it comes to the clock and making decisions. He knew that that clock was going to wind after the review. He had to make sure that his timeout maximized the number of ticks left for Riley Skinner if Boston College scores. So here we go. First and goal, BC. Montel Harris, the tailback. Dominique Davis on for the injured crane. Going to keep it. Fight his way toward the goal line. We don't have a signal. Stopped right there, and now we get the signal touchdown. What a drive. And Jag saying we're going for two. Some BC fans here in the cold. A few of them without shirts. You talk about a gutsy drive. Put together by Dominic Davis, freshman quarterback, getting a lot of help from his offensive line, one of the best offensive lines in the country, and an experienced group of wide receivers making plays down the football field. Gunnell, Robinson. You got the signal, and David, right now they're, they're talking out at the 18, the officials. Uh, you take a, a look at something. If he scored, it was a second effort. Effort. He did not get across the plane on that first thrust. Looked like he got it, some help too from a couple teammates. Chris Crane out with the broken collarbone. I don't think there's enough there to reverse this call. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. So it's a one point lead for the Eagles. Jim Grobe, his team's still alive here. He's got Riley Skinner to try to take him down the field and still alive for the Atlantic Division title. But 
What a drive by BC to take the lead. And going for two. Harris Powers won't stop. Fighting his way. Gets there. Man, second effort both on the touchdown and now on the conversion. And the lead is three. We saw a lot of this last week. How many times did we see Harris working against the Florida State defensive front? Talented players up front for the Seminoles, and he just wouldn't quit. Carrying defenders, stepping through tackles. And Jeff Jagosinski has to be very proud about the way his team reacted. You know, that third and five completion, Terry, the ball over the shoulder on the flat route to Brandon Robinson. That was a big play. That would have forced a huge decision by Coach Jags and whether they go, they're only at about their own 35 yard line. Robinson made three big catches on that drive, and Gannell, a real game changer coming back to the football to beat G for the catch. And take nothing away from that man, Dominique Davis, who, uh, you know, he left it on the turf a couple of times. He struggled throughout the game. They haven't moved the football at all in the second half until the last drive. Now you really have to give it to Dominique Davis. A kid coming off the bench cold in the biggest situation of the year on the road. And this is a Wake Forest team that won the ACC two years ago. Minute 12 left. Plenty of time for Riley Skinner to get Sam Swank in range. And the two timeouts. Washington Brown back deep at their own 17 yard line. Good lead in the air. Devon Brown from his own 10. Breaks through across the 30, and they will start at the 32 yard line. So Riley Skinner, the junior, who's thrown for over 6,000 yards in his career. A couple of late drives this year for game winners. Five in his career, trying to do it again for Wake Forest to keep them alive in the race for the Atlantic Division title. And if there's a silver lining in Boston College scoring on first down, Wake Forest kept two timeouts. Here we go. Out of the gun is Skinner. Steps up. Throws on the run. Got a man. It's Bolden across midfield. And all of a sudden, he's to the 45 of BC. Six catches for DJ Bolden. That's a big one. Throwing daggers. Riley Skinner is so slick with his feet, moving in the pocket, and to take a little bit off that throw on the corner route. Impressive. Gain of 26, first and 10. Skinner under pressure this time, breaks through. Gonna run it. And get out of bounds at the 40. Raji was in there first to flush him out of the pocket. This looks a lot like last week against North Carolina State. The game on the line. And last week, Wake Forest needed a touchdown to win. We mentioned at the top, Riley Skinner doing everything he could on that drive, making all the plays to put his team in position to win. Once again this week, Terry, he's got him in positive territory. And again this week, for the first time, remember, they've got Sam Swain. Going behind Bolden, who tried to one-hand it. Swain with the quad injury, missed from 47 earlier. Right now at about the 39 yard line, they'd be looking at at least a 56 yarder. Yeah. And I think you're in four down territory here. And Riley Skinner has to be thinking that way. Steve Lebowski, the offensive coordinator, treating his playbook the same. Plenty of time for Skinner. Can't find anyone open. Throws on the run, incomplete. He had two men out there, as a matter of fact. Wooster was the tight end, maybe the man he was gunning for. Yeah, and I think the key there was that Boston College did a great job up front with their front seven. They forced Riley Skinner to retreat on the roll instead of allowing him to stay flat or gaining ground, and that, that took a lot off the throw. Once again, Mark Herzlick. What a game he's had. And with the injury to Swank, you don't really think about it here. Fourth and five. It comes down to this. Can they stay alive? And they whistle it dead. Timeout. Boston College. 
So with 27 seconds left. Jagodzinski calls his next, next to last timeout. We put it back to 29 seconds on the clock. Well, Sam Swain came out early today not knowing whether he could go or not. And that's the one we just mentioned. It's close to having 55, 56 yards worth of distance on that miss. The ball was up, elevated on the upright by quite a ways, and it was a tough decision. You know, what, what's, what are the better odds? Do you feel like you can pick up the fourth and five, or do you feel like Swank is up to a 56, maybe 57 yarder? You think if, if he were healthy, you know, you, you Jim Grove, you say, let's go ahead and take a shot. But with that injury, and after seeing the 47 yard try, he's going to send Skinner back out. Fourth down. Skinner. Throws lofted it toward the end zone up in the air incomplete. Rooster was the man it was broken up. And the hopes of the Demon Deacons sailing to the back of the end zone with that pass. Uh, you saw the sigh of relief. From Jeff Jagosinski. You talk about the weight of the world off his shoulders. This looked like a game that was in jeopardy for Boston College prior to the drive. And it didn't look like Skinner had the opportunity to pick that first down up with his feet. Wooster had to wait for it just a bit. And it allowed the defense to recover and apply the hit. So to one knee goes Davis. Think about that young man. Coming on, making some mistakes, but not expecting the play, obviously. Crane goes out, and Jeff Jagodzinski, with the clock running out here, is going to escape Winston-Salem with the win and stay alive. And with a win next week against Maryland, they go to Tampa. That's a well-chosen word, Terry. That was an escape. And what a drive put together by Dominique Davis. David, our Chevrolet players of the game, Mark Hurds looked at two interceptions, a touchdown. Alfonso Smith did a little bit of everything for Wake Forest. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. So a chilly afternoon here in Winston-Salem, and Alfonso Smith, his team coming up just short. And they had to believe that they had it. I mean, you think about, I, I mean, that, uh, to walk away with a win here, B.C., you know, without their starting quarterback not being able to move the football at all in the second half and have to drive down the field to win it at the end. You got to hand it to him yeah, against all odds and it looked pretty bleak third and five inside their own territory. Dominique Davis had not done much at all throwing the football. He connects to Brandon Robinson the great throw down the field to Gunnell and then the big slant ball to day to Robinson to put them in position to win. The AC is still alive in the ACC race. Think about that final drive. Davis five of six for 72 yards in the air. And then he had the touchdown run from one yard out. 24 21 is your final. The Eagles get the win on the road for David Nori our entire crew. I'm Terry Gannon. So long from Winston Salem. We'll send you back to the studio now.